performance in which they stopped Norfolk State. College football on BET travels to Jackson, Mississippi and Memorial Stadium for the first annual Thurgood Marshall Classic as the Rattlers of Florida A&M host the Tigers of Jackson State. Hello again, everyone. I'm Charlie Neal, and welcome to Black College Football on BET. A big game for both of these teams, a must-win for Florida A&M and Jackson State. Of course, Florida A&M uh, is coming off of a big win a week ago in which they scored 84 points off of, off of Norfolk State. And tonight we'll decide whether or not they are real or imagined and who will be their starting quarterback for the remainder of the season. As far as Jackson State is concerned, it's gut check time for this team. Here's a team that hasn't started 0-3 since 1969, and it's a must-win for them especially in their home opener in front of the hometown crowd. Let me bring in my partner of 19 years, Lim Barney, former JSU star and uh, NFL Hall of Famer. And when you look at this Florida A&M team at the beginning of the year, three quarterbacks vying for the position vacated by Odom and Sampson from a year ago. Billy Joe said, I'll start each one of you in the first three games and then make my decision. Tonight, Pat Bonner gets the nod. Well, Pat Bonner Charlie has drawn the long straw. He's a senior quarterback. He has a fine arm. He'll do a lot of play selections, and I think they're going to air the ball out quite a bit tonight. And whoever plays quarterback will have to get the ball in the hands of Jockway Nunley, who was last year's MEAC Rookie of the Year. Rookie of the Year last year, Charlie, and has uh, all American candidacy on him. He's a fine receiver, Charlie, that not only just runs with speed and skill, he runs precise and crisp routes. He could play havoc in Jackson State secondary tonight. Jackson State lost 15 starters from last year's squad, seven of them on the defensive side of the ball. One concern of Coach James Carson was the secondary, and Eric Wilcher, the veteran back there, the free safety will have to step up to the plate tonight. Indeed he will, Charlie. He's a senior free safety man. He hasn't played with the intensity that the secondary coach would like to see him play with Coach Kelly. But again, he had a crisp week of practice, and he's looking to step up to the plate tonight. And they are going to have to keep the ball out of the hands of the Florida A&M Rattlers on the offensive side, and the only way to do it is to control the ball yourself. That is Jackson State, and they can do it with the running of Destry Wright. Destry Wright, Charlie, last week had an outstanding running game against Tennessee State. Tonight he'll be called upon to do the same thing. He had two crucial fumbles last week. He said he's forgot about last week. He's concentrating on this week, which begins tonight. All right, 16th meeting between these two teams, and it's been 20 years since Florida A&M has won here in Jackson, Mississippi, and we'll be back with the start of tonight's game in just a moment. Today's game brought to you by Southwest Airlines. With fares so low, you have the freedom to go places and do the things. Never thought possible, fly Southwest Airlines. And by the irresistible taste that makes you say, did somebody say McDonald's? Charlie Neal and Lem Barney here. First annual Thurgood Marshall Football Classic. Here's Mark Washington, the quarterback of record for Jackson State. Succeeded Graylin Pratt from a year ago, and Jackson State will get the ball first down and 10 at their own 20. They received the opening kickoff, and they brought it back. I should say it was down in the end zone, and they will start first down and 10 at their own 20. Duckworth and Destry Wright, the setbacks behind the quarterback. Mark Washington. As you look at the offensive line of Jackson State, it averages 325. Destry Wright has room on the outside. Turns the corner, still on his feet, has a first down. Out to the 35-yard line after a 15-yard run. The Western Union starting lineups. 
presented by Western Union, the fastest way to send money worldwide. So going without the huddle. Hurry up offense. Similar to what they call the run and shoot, but it's more of a West Coast style run and shoot. Indeed. 15 yards amassed on that play, opening play by Jester yes, Wright. 129 yards for him a week ago. On second down, Wright has it on the draw, still on his feet. And struggles out to the 43-yard line. Gain of eight on the play. Before he's finally brought down by Pat Burroughs. Here's Florida a ms defense. Defensive line averages 263 pounds. Tyron Johnson, the three-year starter up there. The linebackers, watch out for Ulrich Johnson. He'll make a lot of plays tonight. And in the secondary, the three backs led by Russell Parker who was a cornerback a year ago. Second down and two to try and the screen. And it's oh. dropped in and out of the hands of the receiver. And that was Daniel Guy, who did not play a week ago, was left home from the Tennessee State game because of some disciplinary reasons and had a big opportunity. He had some running room left. Indeed, Charlie. The defense was spread out across the field. They had bought on the outside screen. Guy comes back in. It was a center screen. Everything executed except for the catch. Third down and two. Ball at the 43. Mark Washington, the quarterback. Straight ahead, hands off right, has the first down and more. Across the 45 to about the 48-yard line before Ulrich Johnson made the stop. Pick up about five then, Charlie. Good play then. Good play selection. Good call from the uh, offensive brain trust. Again, Destry right doing what he does best, advancing the ball upfield. Ulrich Johnson will check out of the lineup. Now for Florida A&M at that linebacker spot. It is first and ten. Jackson State. Destry right in motion. Back to pass, Washington, he'll keep it. On a design, quarterback keeper, cuts outside, still on his feet, inside the 30, knocked out right at the 30-yard line, make it the 31 of Florida A&M. A good run by the quarterback, Mark Washington, the gunslinger, a junior out of San Antonio, Texas. Charlie, outstanding play selection here again. They're trying to control the ball by way of the ground. Three-step drop, fool the linebackers, quarterback keeper up the middle, Nifty running here by Mark Washington as he breaks it out to the right sideline. Good stiff arm, but he's got to get out of bounds. He can't take these little nicks and dinks from defensive backs if he wants to play the entire game. 22 yards on the gain on the run, and here's Ducksworth straight up the middle for a gain of a couple down to about the 27, 28-yard line of Florida A&M. This drive started at their own 20. And again, as we talked about in the open limb, ball control, the most important thing for them right now, and they're doing it on the ground. Indeed, Charlie, it's paramount for them. Last week, if anything was improved, it was the offensive line that opened gaping holes for Destry, and it looked like again tonight that they're doing what they need to do. Second and six, and here's Destry Wright. Cannot get away from the defensive line and making the tackle for Florida A&M. Number 42, and that is Kenneth Youngblood, outside linebacker. There he is, Youngblood out of Dallas, Carter High. Gain of one, third down and five. Florida a is gifted uh, with a score of uh, senior veteran ball players. And number 42, Youngblood, fits into that mode. Back to pass on third down. Time. Complete to Sylvester Mars for a first down inside the 10. At the seven-yard line, it'll be first and goal, Jackson State. Fine. 18 yards on the reception. Fine throw and catch combination. Again, number 85, the wide receiver here. Look, much crisper tonight. Setting up, not throwing off his back feet. Spiral. Good job there by number 85, Sylvester Morris, coming down. He don't need to celebrate too early. A bit premature, I, I might add. First and goal, Jackson State. Opening drive of this ball game from Jackson, Mississippi. Here's Ducksworth. Trips down and falls at the two. They're going to mark it right at about the two-yard line. 
Good job there by the defensive uh, linebacker stripping him, tripped him up. Otherwise, it would have been an end for a six-point play by Duxworth. Get a chance to watch it again. Here it is in the middle. Good blocking. Look at the offensive line. There's a the guy had one hand around his ankle. Otherwise, he would have scored. And a flag goes down. We may see holding. That was thrown by the umpire. This is a Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference crew. officiating crew in the inner sectional contest. The visiting team brings the officiating crew for the visiting conference. Ball start. Well, that's better than holding. It's only five yards instead of 15. Yeah, but again, they need to alleviate those uh, unnecessary penalties. Here again, they had an opportunity to score inside the goal line, but a procedure penalty will mark them back five. You look at James Carson on the sideline at his second and goal. The ball at the eight-yard line for Jackson State, the eight of Florida A&M. Destry right in motion. Quarterback draw. Quarterback is going to keep it. Struggles to the one. They'll mark it probably around the two. It'll be third down and goal. Mark Washington on the keeper. A little quicker, he may have had a chance to burst it over for the first six. Get a chance, three-step, four-step, plant, driving. Good job here by the defense of the Rattlers converging now on the running back, the quarterback, who almost got it in. Third and goal. Ducksworth the up back in the I formation. Right the second back. It's right. Dances. Struggles. Yes. Does he get in? No signal from the official as of yet. The ball is across the plane, but I think they're going to say his knee touched down prior to the goal line. Big, big decision here. Fourth now. down. Big decision. Here it is. Good blocking at the point of attack. They went for the fake. Good job by Ducksworth. Ball handed off to Destry. Now Florida and m calls timeout to get a better defensive call. And Jackson State on fourth down situations this year. 25%. They are two of eight. There's a timeout on the field. 10-23 remaining first quarter. No score, but Jackson State threatening with a fourth and goal at the one-inch line. Today, people who didn't... Down, trying to hand off to no Destry good. Wright, no and good. it is no good. He tripped over one of the offensive linemen, and they drive 99 yards, I mean, I should say 79 yards, and come away empty-handed. Big feather in the cap for the Rattlers defense as they turn them around five downs, five attempts within the goal line yardage. Here it is again. Good job there. Quarterback lost his footing. Running back tripped over one of the blocking linemen. Florida A&M Rattlers turning Jackson State Tigers around. So Florida and m getting their first possession with Pat Bonner, a transfer from Temple University. Played uh, quite a bit for Temple last year, although they won only three games, and he's working from his own end zone. They like to throw the ball. Let's see if they run it out of the end zone to try to get some breathing room. It's a pass. He's back to pass. Don't be surprised. And he throws, and it's complete on the far sideline to Demetrius Bendros. And let's look at the offensive alignment for the Rattlers of Florida and m They have an offensive line that's pretty huge. They average 315 pounds up front. And they lead led by Keith Morris, who started every game a year ago. They allowed just four sacks this year. Ingram, Gardner, Morris, Gary, and Farland. Back to pass again. They will call on the defensive back. And that's Rashard Anderson, who knocked down Bendros. Bendros, the receiver, beyond the five-yard mark. And uh, there'll be a penalty against Jackson State. The defense of Jackson State, 290 up front with Chandler Hammock, Rogers, and Jason Marshall, the linebackers. Gatlin getting his first start, a transfer out of LSU of the year and playing in his first game. And the secondary, Wiltshire, the veteran back there, along with Anderson, Keith Williams, and Vince Burton. And uh, starting lineups presented by Western Union, the fastest way to send money nationwide. So a discussion whether or not this is a pass situation of whether they're going to have a penalty. They may wave this off or not. Let's see. No, they're not. It was 
clearly defensive interference. He tripped the would-be receiver. So the penalty, the second one in the ball game, and both of them against Jackson State. As you look at the MEAC assigned crew, Dan Evans is our referee, along with Dean, Gary, Reese, Randall, Edwards, and Washington. And it is first down and ten for Florida A&M. They have two setbacks behind the quarterback. Modern. And they put the ball on the ground, and they give it to Antoine Flowers. Flowers finds the going very rough, maybe a yard. Correction. That is Greg Buchanan, number seven, instead of Flowers, number one. Greg Buchanan out of Sarasota, Florida, senior from Sarasota High. Came into the game with a 4.9 carry average. From the shotgun this time, Pat Bonner will work. Well, let's, let's see. Run. Yes, he is. He'll stay in the shotgun. Let's run. They have about 70 plays in which they throw the ball. And they try to keep the ball on the ground, but they fool no one, giving it off to Karan White out of Miami's Northwestern High, who also plays a tight end occasionally, number 82. Eric, he picked up a couple. Eric Chandler, along with Ed Reese, on the stop defensively for the Tigers. Brings up a third down and approximately five. Ken Williams is also back there in the backfield, who sometimes becomes frustrated as a running back because they like to throw the ball so much. This is an obvious passing down well, on always, third down. That's always the case. Running backs hate to have it in the air, and uh, receivers hate to have it on the ground. They have to come to a mutual agreement. Third down. Thrown and complete on the far sideline for a first down. And that one is complete to Jockway Nunley, the young man who had 61 receptions a year ago. Eight career games in which he's had over 100 yards receiving. Good job by Patrick Bonner. Fine throw and catch combination. First down yardage acquired. Brings up a first down and 10 from their own 41-yard line. First down. This drive started at their own one. And this one is complete. Lamb, Kanan Lamb, out of Miami's Norland High. Honorable mention all in the AC a year ago. They have great receivers between Nunley, and we haven't seen Tariq Quahim yet. Quahim and Lamb, they combined for 125 receptions a year ago. They call him the Top Gun Trio. As well as should. <laughs> they have a variation of 90 passes here in this offensive game plan. And caught by Kanan Lamb. High pass, still managed to come down with it with Vincent Burton draped all over him. Great concentration here by Lamb as you get a chance to see it again. Patrick. Bonner rolls out to his left, sets up, looks downfield. A strike, a little high, but again, great concentration by Lamb to come up with the first down yardage. 18 yards on the reception by Kanan Lamb, his second of the afternoon. Good job by the offensive line for Bonner. Going deep. Lamb. Lamb. Intercepted. Intercepted. Interception. Rashad Anderson comes up with the INT. Big play. First turnover of the ball game. That's what Jackson State needed. They needed someone to step up. Again, Eric Wiltshire, free safety, is the leader of the secondary. Again, Rashad Anderson coming up with a timely interception. Ball intended for Lamb again, the hot man. I think we got a timeout. No score. 727 left and a break for Jackson State as FAMU was driving. We'll be back. They come from all over for the most agonizing tech. Hey. Get a chance to see this interception again. Watch Rashad Anderson on the way down. He indicates that he's intercepted the ball by holding up a finger, letting the official know 
First and ten for the Tigers of Jackson State going the other way. Again, giveaways and takeaways, turnovers play a paramount role in winning and losing ball games. There's James Carson, who was a defensive coordinator many years for Jackson State before becoming the head coach. He played, he uh, is the coordinator under W.C. Gordon here, and he appreciates good defensive play, and I know you do too, Lim, no especially by about. a defensive back, especially when a team is passing the way Florida A&M is. At their own three, here's Destry Wright turning the corner again, gets around outside the 10 and steps out after first down at the 14-yard line. So a gain of 11 for Destry Wright. We had 30 of Jackson State's 66 yards in the first drive. He gets 11 more, so he has 41 yards rushing today. A dangerous play here, but again, Destry, with his outstanding speed and quickness, gets out of the end zone, advanced the ball upfield, bump there, but gets the necessary yards for the first down. Ducksworth, the up man in the eye. Sylvester Morris to the top of your screen. Troy Thigpen on the no side. Play action. Here's a quarterback being chased from behind and finally brought down. James Ray on the stop, a linebacker. Number 94 on the stop. Here's the play again, play action pass. It's a pass all the way, but again, a lot of heat applied by the Rattlers of Florida a &M. Backside pressure also was being applied by Kenneth Youngblood, number 42. Washington runs into the offensive guard, Todd. Option. And he keeps it this time and falls down as Dorick Johnson gets there. He's got to rely on his backs. It's an option. Get as much yardage as he can. Once a defensive player commits, he's still got to toss it out because the back is relying on him to toss it out. From the 20-yard line, just outside the 20, third down and about three for Jackson State. They go again with the hurry-up offense. And the seven comes out, thick pin, and Duckworth comes in, high formation. On third down, they pitch to right, trying to turn the corner. Big third down play. Let's see how much he got. Did close. he get enough? It is going to be close. Stop made by Kevin Cleveland, number 21. Here it is again. Good job blocking here at the point of attack. Good job by Ducksworth. Takes down the force man. Right, clears the corner. It's going to be close as they bring the change across the field. Fine force, good feel, good tackle. Short yardage midfield, big, big must for any defensive team. Jackson State started the season with a loss to Howard University in Washington, D.C., in which they gained only 133 total yards and allowed 487. And last week, lost to Tennessee State, 33-21. They gave up 521 yards then. And they get the first down, so... They convert. Coming into the night's game, they were 34% on third down conversions. In the series, Jackson State leads 8-5-2, which the series began in 1961. They won two years ago here in Jackson, lost last year down in Tallahassee. We saw them in the Circle City a couple of years back that they played to a tip time. Yeah. We also saw this uh, Florida a &M play one of the longest games in 1AA history, a six overtime yes, game. Yes, Circle City Classic. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not invite him back to the Circle City. <laughs> First down and 10 for Jackson State. Ball resting just outside the 25-yard line, or just inside the 25. Offside. And Offside, free play. We're going to get a penalty. It's going to be whistled against Wendell Ashley, the Miami Northwestern sophomore. Plays defensive back and linebacker. A little too anxious. Got in there too quick. Harold Rhodes is in the lineup right now out of Prentice, Mississippi. That's him get the ball. Wendell Ashley, as you can see, number 11, was uh, premature and advancing over the line of scrimmage during the signal calls by Mark Washington. The five-yard markoff brings up first down and five. He didn't play last year because of an off-field accident. Dead ball. Offside. Defense, five yards. Which he uh, inhaled some gas fumes while pumping gas into his car at a gas station. The gas line broke and he got gas all over him and uh, caused him to have to sit out. Had some severe 
problems, painting spells, and things of that nature. And hopefully he's back to full power. Indeed. Straight ahead, Ducksworth to the 36-yard line and another first down for Jackson State. Duckworth out of Gulfport, Mississippi. Played mostly as a reserve a year ago. 3.7 grade point average in elementary ed. Outstanding young man here from Gulfport. Could have been a face mask inadvertently. Good job, good fake there by the other back. Destry right. First down yardage gain by Ducksworth. First and 10 from their own 36 yard line. Destry right. Couple yards gained. First Good. hit by Frank Burroughs. Good job defensively by the right side of the defense for the Rattlers of Florida AM. Four minutes, 27 seconds remaining in this, the first quarter. Jackson's opening season game at home. Second down, nine Tigers. They're getting two on the play. Time out. Didn't like what he saw, so he decided he would take one. Mark Washington, seventh leading passer in the SWAC, and number eight in total offense. No score. Score here in the first quarter, 403 left. Between Florida and and Jackson State, I'm Charlie Neal along with Glenn Barney. And over the years on BET, Jackson State 11-5-1. In fact, those five losses won by a total of only 30 points. So they were right in the ball game each time. Certainly were. Second down and nine for Jackson State at the 37. Their own 37. Mark Washington back to pass, throws the screen. screen. And still on his feet is Sylvester Mars coming up to the 40-yard line, just shy of the 40. His second reception of the day out of New Orleans, McDonough High. Seven receptions coming into the game. A bit slow with that center screen, first time as well as second time. First time it was attempted to uh, Daniel Guy. Mm -hmm. Daniel Guy missed the ball completely, didn't watch the ball in his hands. Here again, it's attempted to number 85, Sylvester Morris. Took a little too much time developing. It is third and six. The ball just shy of the 40-yard line. They're going without the huddle. Throughout most of the game, right is the man in motion. Nobody behind him. And here's Mark Washington, and here's the blitz. And Wendell Ashley came untouched. And a big sack. One of the few times we've seen Mark Washington sack this year. Somebody missed a block, and again, Wendell Ashley has got his ears pent back. Get a chance to see it again. Between the end and the tackle, heads down, barreling. Mark Washington felt the heat a little too late. Fourth down of approximately 15 yards. Punting situation. And getting it off is Kenny Page. Good hit. And on the return is Jockway Nunley trying to get to the corner, and he is tripped up before he could turn the corner. And the man that came up to trip him up Kendrick was Kerry Kendrick Lanier. And there's a timeout on the field. No score. Mamu and Jackson State. You're looking at the radio broadcast crew for Jackson State. The young man on the left is Willie Richardson, uh, all-time Jackson State receiver and uh, NFL player. And you know him very well, Lemon Rock. Carpenter is the man on the right side, the play-by-play uh, -play man, but Willie's doing the color for the JSU radio. How well do I know Willie? They called him Wonderful Willie here. <laughs> All-pro wide receiver with the Baltimore coach. Dear friend. First down and 10 at the 36, their own 36. Florida a and has the ball. Ken Williams is the second back in the eye. Willie Richardson, a great all-time receiver, Jackson State. They still has his hands laminated in the trophy case of Jackson State. Ken Williams gets the first down out to the midfield strike. Gain of about 13 on the play for Ken Williams. Too much yardage, first downs by way of ground. Again, coming up to make the stop. Number 41, gaping hole here for the running back. Good job at the point of attack. Coming up to make the stop with a trio of tacklers. 
Eric, Eric Welcher. Welcher, yes. 14 yards on the game for Ken Williams out of Baltimore's Lake Clifton High. Had 208 yards against Jackson last year. And their win down in Tallahassee. Back to pass is Patrick Bonner. And Bonner has it complete to Jack Way Nunley, or they call it complete. Let's see. They're calling it complete. So Nunley with the reception. And a gain of about five on the play to the 45 of Jackson State. One of the things that a good ball control does in terms of the offensive side for Jackson State is it keeps them from striking quickly because you know you can score so fast through the air. Indeed. Here's Ken Williams again, and Ken has the first down inside the 40 to about the 37-yard line. Stop on the play made by linebacker Longstreet. However, after the first down yardage had been gained, gaping hole again on the right side defensively for the Tigers of Jackson State. Williams' second long run for first down yardage. Averaging 5.3 a carry coming into the game. First and 10 at their own at Jackson State's 38-yard line. Good job. Look at him just break, breaking off tackles. People hitting him, and uh, he still refuses to go down before he's finally brought down by Longstreet. Cannot on tackle a big, strong back. Here it is again, right at the point of attack. Good job, good force, good feel. They're reaching, they're grabbing, they're not putting shoulder pads on Williams. You can't do that to a big, tough running back. Good job by Williams. And look at the weight on him, 236. It's six foot one. He's a load. Play action pass. Bonner throwing top. receiver with the defensive Lamb. fell down and Lamb has it as the defensive back Vince Burton fell down and Lamb had easy pickings that time. Indeed, the grass is the grass field is very spongy. I don't know if he's got on long enough cleats. Good job here. Look at Bonner. Fine over the head strike. Here's Burton trying to get back up and Lamb gets it down. Close to the 20-yard line. Receives help from his friend, number 44. Gatlin comes over to help on the stop. First down and 10. Remember the last long drive by FAMU was stopped by a fumble. Looks like it's a fumble uh, again. It's a fumble by an interception. But Ken Williams gets it inside the 20 to about the 18. A gain of two. It'll be second down and about eight. Ken Williams, the fourth leading rusher in the NBA C. Came into the game with 79 yards rushing, and that's going to be the end of the first quarter here at Jackson, Mississippi. The first annual Thurgood Marshall Football Classic as Florida a ms band is arrived from Tallahassee. Marching 100. We'll be back. Set here in Jackson, Mississippi, enjoying the festivities at the first annual Thurgood Marshall Football Classic. Here's the first quarter stats. She's talking to her mother like she knows what's going on. <laughs> we'll look at them after this play. Pat Bonner has his team poised. Second down, eight yards to go. Inside the 20 of Jackson State, working out of the shotgun. No score in this contest as of yet. As the is rather fade pass. And here's Cannon counter. Lamb with the touchdown. Lamb with his second touchdown reception of the year. Their 10th touchdown passing this season. Get a chance to see it again. Three-step drop from the shotgun. Nice lob. Look at the touch. Excellent touch. Look at the tight spiral. Beaten on the play is Anthony Payton. Great job by this play selection from up top. Peyton lets him get off the line of scrimmage. He's got to bump him. He's got to take inside coverage away from him and force him to beat him outside. Again, outstanding throw by the quarterback. Great catch by Lamb for the first score of the evening. And the point after touchdown is good by Juan Toro, who right now is perfect in PATs this year. 11 for 11. And we'll be back. FAMU strikes first, 7 and up. The Jackson State University, Sonic Boom of the South. We'll see them at halftime. Meanwhile, 
is that Florida A&M. Florida A&M. Oh, that's March Florida A&M. Here's the Sonic Boom. Here's the Sonic Boom. <laughs> Indescribable. Seven to nothing is our score. Charlie Neal along with Seth Barty here. As you look at Jeremy Edwards, Jr. out of Mariana, Florida, who the left-footed kicker doesn't allow too many runbacks on his kickoffs this year. Here's why. Tori Thickpin will feel it at the one. Comes out to the 23-yard line. Goes Tory Thickpin on the return. And that's where Jackson State will start their third offensive possession of the evening. First down and 10. And last scoring drive, seven plays, 64 yards, 236 off the clock. And it culminated with an 18-yard touchdown pass, Matt Pat Bonner to Kanan Lamb. That was Bonner's first, uh, fourth rather, touchdown of the year. That interception he threw earlier was his first interception of the season. Even though they've started different quarterbacks all year long, that is Florida and M. Each one has played just about every game. A plethora of tacklers on the left side for the Rattlers of Florida and M. Outstanding job, force field, containment as well as tackle. As Destry Wright got little. Maybe a half a yard. We're going to call it second down and nine. Right, the lone set back behind Mark Washington Swanigan, along with Tory Thickpin. Slot it to the top of your screen. Option. And Destry Wright has trouble finding the handle, and he's warmed under. That's that little bit of hesitation gives the defense enough time to recover, and the loss is back to the 20-yard line. Absolutely, Charlie. Get a chance to do it again. Maybe a bit high and behind him with too much steam on him. Here it is. Here's a toss behind him. Great job of concentration and staying focusing here on the toss is Destry Wright. Here it is again. A little high. Good job of gathering the ball in before he thinks about running. Score of defenders over there for the stop. A loss of about three yards will call it third down and 13. From the shotgun is the gunslinger from San Antonio, Mark Washington, with time. Throws down the middle, has it complete to Sylvester Morris for the first down at the 36-yard line. He was open quickly again. Mark Washington spots him from the shotgun. Uh, Grover Fields was covering. A little low and away, he has to slide to make the reception. However, it's good enough for the first down yardage. 16 yards on the catch by Sylvester Morris, junior out of New Orleans. No, junior out of New Orleans. New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> Seven to nothing. Florida A&M leading Jackson State here. On another option to the right side. Here's Destry Wright. Outside, still running. Struggling. Gets the first down at the 47-yard line. Great determined run by Destry Wright. Darnell Vickers finally rode him down, but not before he picked up the necessary yard for the first down. Watch Charlie almost executed perfectly. Here's the play action pass. Here's the option. Watch the man, the up back man who has to force the play was taken down by the receiver. You cannot bring those good backs down by trying to grab and wrap. You've got to lift, tackle, and wrap your arms up. First and ten for the Tigers of Jackson State. Back to pass again. Quarterback throws, has it complete for a first down. Inside the 40 to the 38-yard line to Daniel Guy. Guy dropped one earlier. He's out of Memphis, Tennessee. He's fairly high. And that is his fourth reception of the year. Didn't play against Tennessee State a week ago. Missed going home to Memphis last, last week in the Southern Heritage Classic, ninth annual. 16 yards on that catch by Daniel Guy. Ball control. Jackson State moving the ball now. Started at their own 23. They're in bad territory. But there's a flag down, and we have an incomplete pass on the far sideline intended for Torrey Thigpen. It may be holding, as you said. A little slow getting up is Tyron Johnson out of Miami's Northwestern High. His brother Oric is uh, starting the middle linebacker. It may have even been a takedown in this. Here it is. Looks like it came from the right side from the offensive tackle. Florida a &M came into today's game ranked number two in the Sheridan poll and number 19 in the Sports Network Division 1AA Top 25 poll. 
three MEAC schools. Holding, on the offense, 10 yard penalty, replay first down. Three MEAC schools are ranked in the top 25. Hampton is ranked fifth. They came out with a win today over North Carolina A&T. Florida A&M ranked 19th. And Howard University, who's playing Arkansas Pine Bluff today in St. Louis, is ranked 20th. Southern represents the SWAC at number 18. Hampton number one in the Sheridan poll. And they are 3-0. All conference wins. It's going to be hard to beat them as they go down the stretch. First and 26. Quarterback draw. Not much going on there on the quarterback draw as Othello Vaughn makes the stop. September is sizzling on BET Action Pay-Per-View. Order the Thriller Dark City or Wes Craven's Bowl sequel, Scream 2. And there's live wrestling, WWF Breakdown in your house on September 27th at 8 p.m. Eastern, Eastern Standard Time. So if you don't get the BET Action Pay-Per-View, call your cable or satellite provider today. It is second down. 24 after a gain of only two. Stands in there, throws. Augusta Mars has it. Has the first down at the 27-yard line. Sylvesta Mars. When you need it, he's a big playmaker. He's the man to go to. Good job here. Blocking up front by the big lineman. He may not have the first down. It may be close. They may bad have to spot. measure. It's a bad spot if he doesn't. They're going to measure. Good job here by Mark Washington stepping up having the wherewithal to fire the ball over this head. Good tight spiral. Number 85, the intended receiver comes up with it. Sylvester Morris, they're bringing the chains out now. If they don't give it to him, it's a bad spot. I'm not being partial either. So. <laughs> you know, they've come out with a theory about the toughest schedules in 1AA football, and Florida a and is set to have the third toughest schedule in the 1AA. As you see, he is short by inches which will bring up a third down. It was not a first down, third down and in inches. But they'll say that Florida a and has the third toughest schedule in Division I AA behind Delaware and Indiana State. Delaware State is said to have the sixth toughest schedule, while Norfolk State the 11th. They missed on a fourth down and in inches first possession. This is third. Yeah, this is third, but they missed the first time on uh, fourth and in inches on the goal line. Here they're faced with a third in inches now at their own 27-yard line. Duckworth, the up back. In the eye formation. And Duckworth has it. He may not get it. He did not. not I don't third. think he did. Not on third, he didn't. He did not get it. The left side of that line collapsed very, very well. Good penetration from the left side defensively for the... And then Rattlers, Eddie here Parsons, go. the defensive end, watching number 99, sticks his head in there. The play was completely broken up by Adrian Jones, number 52, as he crashed through the center and the tackle. Here it is again. Boom. Nothing could form or develop there. Great job by number 52, Adrian Jones, from his linebacker position. Fourth, Fourth down. down. Big play. Pitch to Destry Wright. No. Yes. Maybe. Let's see. No. Nothing. He was hit in the backfield, spun away from Wendell Ashley, and finally brought down by Russell Parker. So they turned the ball over on downs for the second time on a fourth down play. There's a timeout on the field, 10.03 to go. We're in the second quarter, and it's a 7-0 Rattler lead. Gorgeous sunset with some high clouds here in Jackson, Mississippi. Threat of rain on the horizon. And that was something that Jackson State was kind of praying for because they felt it gave them an advantage, especially yo, against yo. the passing yo, game. Yo, yo. One of your uh, frat brothers. Yes, isn't? sir. Nukes. K.A. side, till I die. <laughs> Find new pie. Diamonds in the sky. First down and 10, Tennessee State from their own 31-yard line, leading 7-0. By the way, I want to say hello to Coach Ellis, uh, former coach, uh, former athletic director, and the founder of Delta Delta, Cap Apisai here. He's uh, bit ill. We wish you all the luck in the world, Coach. We're praying with you. Praying for you. Rashard Anderson finally makes the stop after the reception by Jockway Nunley. He gains about three, four yards on the play. 
And mark it out to the 35. It'll be second down and six. Coach Ellis, one of the true gentlemen of Jackson State, a player here, a coach, an athletic director, and again, as I mentioned, Charlie was the founder of Delta Delta Chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi fraternity. Coach, we wish you all the luck. Good job. Defensive. Not much running run, running room for Kenny Williams. Takes it straight up the middle. One of the things that Van View had to replace was the graduation of two key offensive linemen, Shabaka Abdul Majid, who was a tackle and guard, Rafael Garcia, along with quarterback Odeman Sampson, who threw for over 3,000 yards, 3292 to be exact, and 25 touchdowns. But they haven't lost much of a step there. Who was that first ball player you call? Uh, Shabaka Abdul Majid. I'll take one of those too. <laughs> It is third down after the loss of one. Standing in there and throwing and completing it. First down, Kanan Lamb. Forward progress gives him enough for the first down out to the 42-yard line. Lamb's a big playmaker. A recipient again by Bonner. Stands up. Good protection here. Soft pass across the middle. On tackle, you can't do it. It allows the receiver at least three more yards to pick up the necessary first down yard. Five receptions for 65 yards for Kanan Lamb. Got to put those shoulder pads on him, wrap up, lift, and take him to the turf. And he has a touchdown. Eight, 15, the time remaining here. We're in the second quarter, seven to nothing. Bart a and m and... Pat Bonner, not liking something that he saw, decides to call a timeout. We'll take one. 7 to nothing. Fan you. We're in Jackson. Southern Heritage Classic was last week. This is the third good Marshall Classic. Three than any other. The same Duralast we stock at AutoZone. The Duralast battery. Power you can depend on. No, close. Close well, first down again, yard. Pat Don Bonner tried to call a timeout. I don't think they gave it to him. And he ran for about uh, seven, eight yards. The reason they didn't, Charlie, the clock, the play clock was running down. He wanted to call a timeout so they wouldn't get a penalty. But again, the clock had elapsed in its necessary time. They marked off the five yards, didn't give the timeout, and now they're back to live action. Second down. And this one complete. And again, Jockey Nunley. Bonner has completed every pass he's thrown. All but one went to all of his players. He did throw an interception. This portion of today's game brought to you by the more than 1,700 AutoZone stores across America. AutoZone, the best parts in auto parts. He is 10 of 11. 114 yards, a touchdown, and an INT today. Fumble. And picked up by Ken Williams on the snap. I think it may have been intended to go to him, or was it? It may have, Charlie. Remember last week to Davenport, a direct snap to Davenport. He ran it up the middle for a 35-yard touchdown. Let's look at it again. It, it, well, looked like Bonner was trying to reach for it, so perhaps it was not a direct snap to Williams. Three-yard loss on the play, second down, 13. Had you played by Williams to pick it up and try to advance it. Bonner again throws, has a complete. Kanan Lamb stepped out of bounds. Yardage. But he has the first down. Sixth reception of the evening. I'll tell you, these receivers are tough. They're all over the place between Nunley, Lamb, and Bendros. We haven't even seen Tariq Quahim yet. A man who had 36 receptions a year ago. Fine throw, fine catch combination here from Bonner to Lamb. Covering on the play number 44 from his linebacker position is Gatlin. Lamb had 28 catches last year, six today's game. He may break that tonight. He keeps going the way he's going. Nunley, the intended receiver. We're going to call pass interference, and it's going to be whistled against Vincent Burton. There's Burton out of Gibson, Port Gibson, Mississippi, the city too beautiful to burn. Yes, it is. Port Gibson is the city too beautiful to burn. I have one of my fraternity brothers up from Port Gibson. Harold Liggins up in the booth tonight. Let's get a chance to see it again. 
I don't know if that's defensive uh, interference. He had good coverage on him. But again, uh, we're to call it and the referees are to officiate it. I never saw his hands come up. Uh, yeah. Pushed that's the that's on the defense. 15 yards. First down. Close, but it's going to stand regardless of what we say. 6.35 remaining second quarter. Yes. With all the passing, the game has gone pretty good. Yes, it has. And Charles. I'll tell you why. They've completed them. <laughs> they completed all of them but one, as you mentioned. There it is. I didn't see it really pass interference at all. Yeah, it looked like may have been a, a tad of offensive interference as the receiver was trying to pull the defender down to try and get back in to attempt to catch the ball. First and goal. On a fade. Counter. Wide open. Counter. Touchdown, Florida A&M. Tariq Quaim. Remember I just mentioned we hadn't seen him tonight? Well, he picks up his third touchdown of the year. Seventh leading receiver in the conference. And Florida A&M takes a 13 to nothing lead. Bonner's second touchdown pass of the night. Fam you again striking by way of the air. Their 11th passing touchdown this year. Count it. And Juan Toro's point after is good. And we have a 14 to nothing lead. The touchdown, a pass again. Here it goes through the air. Pat Bonner going to Tariq Quaheen. Today, people who didn't send the money Western Union and the heartbreak it caused. You say your dog called? Yeah, said he needed tuition money for obedience school. That's amazing. No, he's always asking for money for something. Madonna. What did you do? I sent it. But not Western Union? No. They never treated me special. So it never got there? No. But that's not the worst part. It's not? No. Now he turned the cat against me. Uh -huh. Hey, it's your money. Use Western Union, the fastest way to send money worldwide. Pantene hair is my hair. My hair. And my hair. Pantene can improve your hair, no matter what the length, texture, or style. It's not your hair but what you do to your hair. The Pantene Pro-V system can make a difference. Nothing penetrates deeper than Pantene Pro Vitamins. Your hair gets the extra conditioning it needs for a healthy shine. Get the system. It makes a difference. Pantene Pro-V. For hair so healthy, it shines. Works, Works for me. B. E. T. Cool. Good morning. Cool. Who said that? Hey, hey. As Florida and M just completed an eight-play, 69-yard drive that took 3:32 off the clock and culminated with a nine-yard pass from Pat Bonner to Tariq Quahim. Tariq Quahim's first reception of the night, but his third touchdown reception of the year. And here's Jeremy Edwards to kick it off. Tory Thigpen is deep, but Jackson State feels it at his eight-yard line. Tries to get to the sideline, stumbles out to the 30, and that's where Jackson State will go to work first down and 10. Charlie, I'll tell you why they've had a couple of runbacks, because Jeremy Edwards, who's kicking now, he's kicking it into the wind and still kicking it deep. Yeah, he's, he's got a strong leg for a left-footed kicker. Air apparent to the position being held right now by Juan Toro, who's trying to break Jimmy Bertuno's record career record for a point scored 192 he needed 32 coming into the game he's kicked two already reduced that number to 30 first down and 10 Jackson State from their own 30 fourth possession of the night back to pass Mark Washington stands throws has a complete no and good what a hit. incomplete what a hit by the defensive back separating the receiver murder at the 35 one again from the ball that's Grover Fields defensive back watch it again Grover is a converted linebacker so you see here it is <laughs> watch boom separated him from the ball murder at the 35 second down and 10 incompleted forward pass great job by the defense of the Rattlers good drop into position by the linebackers, fine coverage by the secondary. 
The pitch to Destry Wright. Wright down and fumbled, but picked up by Sylvester Mars. He fumbled, and Sylvester Mars picked up the fumble, advanced it, got a first down. I'll tell you what, those Rattlers was are hitting. Yes, bless. The Rattlers are really hitting. Good job here. Good fake. Brought the linebacker in. Good option pitch out. Again, I talked to him yesterday about the traffic. In traffic, you got to cover that ball up. Very opportunistic by Sylvester being at the right spot at the right time. First down and 10. Russell Parker put the helmet in and knocked the ball loose. And Morris, as you said, Lim, right there. First down and 10. Jackson State. And off to Duckworth. Duckworth struggles. First down again for Jackson State inside tennis, uh, Florida and M territory. Fine run by Duxworth from Gulfport, homeboy, Cuz, affectionately called. Watch this. Good job. Good focus. Leg spinning. Keeps churning. Staying upfield. First down and 10. Determined run by Duxworth. 14 yards on the run. Jonathan Walker, he just shed him. And it is first and 10, Jackson State. Thick pen in motion to the near side. And here's Duck. Uh, or I should say definitely right trying to get going. Maybe a holding penalty. Either holding or maybe a face mask. Let's see. See what the penalty is. Well, those flags hurt you when they hit you, too. They got a ball of steel. On them. It's against Jackson State. You can see the reaction of the JSU players. Holding is the call. Ten yard penalty. Bring up second down and 20. On the offense, from the flag, 10 yards. Let's see if we can see who the guilty culprit is. Good job here by Destry, eluding one would-be tackler. May have been uh, Sylvester Morris, the out, the wide out. Well, not 10 yards, but it was from the spot, so it's first and 15. From the midfield strike. From the shotgun is Mark Washington. Swanigan in motion. And the quarterback decides to keep it. Continues to run and gets down to the 45 of Florida AM. Gain of about four or five yards. That's about it. Next week, Jackson State comes back home to play Mississippi Valley. Then they'll play Texas Southern here. Back-to-back -back conference game. for homecoming. So they're home for a while. This is the second of four road trips for the Rattlers of Florida a &M. Next week they're in Atlanta. Then they go to Delaware State the week after. Last week they were at Norfolk State. Heat. Pressure being applied. Throws complete to Destry Wright, who dives out of bounds, but tried to get to the first down marker. He knew where it was, and he just didn't have enough momentum to keep him in bounds. He's about a yard shy. Well, his momentum, because of having to stretch, elongate his body, had his momentum to go out of bounds. Had he had a good balance here, he could have dove forward for the first down marker. Good avoidability here by Mark Washington. Spots a wide open Destry. Right here it is, Charlie. <laughs> he tried. Kevin Indeed Cleveland. He did. Kevin Cleveland, number 21, the man applying the pressure out of St. Petersburg's Lakewood High on the quarterback Mark Washington. Number 20 is in the ball game, Spencer. Six seconds. They want to boost the clock back up from 337 to four minutes and six seconds. Well, they're trying to get it done. Could you repeat the time? Four minutes and six seconds. In the SWAC preseason poll, Sylvester Mars was one of the two players on Jackson State that was picked as an all-conference first-team player, along with Jason Marshall, the defensive lineman for the Tigers of Jackson State. 4.06 is the time they want on the clock. And it's down at 334. Forget to stay with us at halftime. We'll see both bands, the Marching 100, under a new band director this year from Florida AM. And we'll also see the Jackson State 
Tigers. Sonic Boom of the South with the Prancing J Sets. They finally got communication uh, through to the clock operator. Winding it down now from 4 minutes and 19 to 406. That's what the official wants. Texas Southern is the top team in the SWAC coming into today's game, followed by Alabama AM, Southern, Arkansas Pine Bluff, Grambling, Jackson State, Alcorn, Alabama State, Mississippi Valley, and Prairie View. As far as the MEAC is concerned, Hampton holding on to the top spot, followed by Bethune Cookman. We'll see Bethune in our next contest out in Indianapolis at the Circle City Classic as they take on Howard University. FAMU is third, the Aggies of AT fourth, followed by South Carolina State, Dell State, Howard Morgan, and Norfolk State. Back to live action. Third and short. Deep. Going it up. Incomplete. A lot of pressure up front on a third down. And one, I guess they felt maybe they'd catch him napping and maybe uh, get something going. Had he had some time, Sylvester Mars was wide open on the post. Jonathan Walker, number 26, comes in from his secondary position. And again, he was forced to throw off the back foot. He was unable to get anything on the ball. No zip, no velocity whatsoever. Comes up incomplete. Kendrick Travis, the tight end, checks in. Fourth and short they're faced with once again. They also bring in the other tight end, Marcus Rogers. Two tight end offense right now on fourth and short. Destry Wright. He will not get there. Stop shy. And they turn it over for the third time tonight on fourth down plays. Unable to get the necessary yardage needed. And we'll take a timeout. Under four minutes to go. We're in the second quarter. And FAMU leading by two touchdowns. Like a Florida and m Rattler's defense has been stingy when it's had to for the third time tonight. They've turned back Jackson State on the fourth down and short situation once at the goal line. The second time was at the their own 31, and the third time was this pass drive at their own 35. So they take over first down and 10. Billy Joe is their coach. You won't see him down on the sideline, <laughs> even though he's won, uh, had three straight nine win seasons. He coaches for the last nine years. He's been coaching from up in the press box and we talked to him about it earlier tonight and I asked him I said why do you do that Billy he says well a lot of times I can't see when I'm down on the sideline everything I want to see in terms of the, the scheme of things and being able to be on top of, of the action as they complete the pass to the far sideline new receiver in the ball game for Florida A&M is Cedric Mitchell out of Central High in Miami. He said, uh, so I can see a lot better. He said, and also, when I'm down on the sideline, if a coach in the press box sends something down that I don't like and it doesn't work, I can't go, you know, I, I feel like I want to fire him. But if I'm up there and send something down that don't work, I'm not going to fire myself. <laughs> Here's Bonner running, taking off and getting across midfield into Jackson State territory. Smart, de smart decision there by Bonner. He advanced the ball as far upfield as he could. Felt opposition. He hit the deck, which protects himself from any hit. After a gain of uh, about five or six, it'll be second down. We'll call it four. So he's still perfect in passing tonight. Except for the interception. And here is Williams. Kenny Williams into the secondary. Still on his feet. And knocking defenders around. As he continues to bowl over people, he just put his head down there and punished Harold Wooten, number 27. Harold Wooten along with Wiltshire, Eric Wiltshire. Here it is again. You can't tackle a big back this high. Watch. Boom. And Wooten was not really supposed to play tonight. He's had uh, some problems with a knee, but he's in there. 20-yard gain on the run by Ken Williams and FAMU threatening again with 305 and counting to go in the Fumble first quarter. Again. Williams again. Low snap. Low snap. And Brad Collier who also plays on the basketball team, number 77, Finally. out of Bolton, Mississippi, made the stop. He made mention that uh, Matt Bowen uh, was not supposed to play. I know he wish he wasn't in Harold Wooten. Harold Wooten wasn't supposed to play. I know he wish he wasn't in on that particular <laughs> play. It is second down. Williams runs like a runaway freight train. And it's complete on the near side to Kenny Lamb. Lamb. Lamb breaks the tackle. Still on his feet. Pushed out of bounds. Finally by Vince Burton. 
at the eight yard line. Make it the seven. It'll be first and goal. Florida and in. Kanan Lamb. Seven of, reception. Out of New Orleans, high in Miami. Good job here. Good footwork. Nifty move. Throws the defensive back. Continues to accelerate upfield and finally pushed out around the seven yard line where it'll be first and goal for the Rattlers of Florida and in. Fine job there. Florida and M trying to score another one before halftime. They lead it 14 to nothing. Play action. And here's the quarterback. Decides He's going to, to keep run it, it himself. And he takes it down inside the five to about the four yard line. Goes Pat Bonner. This is a team that's only scored three rushing touchdowns this year. Why run it when you can throw it with the efficiency <laughs> you have in those fine receivers? But when you do run it, it opens it up, and it's been shown by the running of Kenny Williams tonight. Kenny Williams has run for 40 yards on eight carries. A long one of 20, and there's a timeout on the field. They want to talk things over. The defense of Jackson State, 2-14 to go, and we'll be back. Some of the crowd on hand here at Memorial Stadium in Jackson, Mississippi, for this first annual Thurgood Marshall Football Classic. I formation. Backs behind the quarterback. Second Ken Williams is the up back in the eye. What a poised quarterback he's been in this first half. He certainly has. He may have just won himself this job. Buchanan with the carry. His first of the Touch. night. Touchdown. Florida and m only their fourth rushing touchdown this year. And it's Buchanan getting the call. Greg Buchanan. And it is his second rushing touchdown. Out of Sarasota, Florida. So Buchanan with the three-yard run. His drive started at their own 35, covered 65 yards. Touchdown the last three possessions for Florida A&M. And Toro with his third point of the night. He needs 29 to tie Jimmy Bertuno's all-time career scoring record. And it's a 21 to nothing. Fam, you lead with 2-10 left. Right here in the second quarter. Defense, great blocking at the point of attack. Buchanan, defiant runner. Backs it into the end zone. He does a backflip. Uh, no ripples. I give him a 10 on the play, but he only gets six <laughs> points for it. As you look at the scoring drive, Buchanan, there he is, the young man who scored the last touchdown. Seven plays, 65 yards, 148 off the clock. As you look at the kicker, Jeremy Edwards. Edwards. Number seven, Tory kicking into a head win. You can see the win having an effect on it. Big pin from the nine. Big pin down at the 19. And that's all he's going to get. They'll mark it at the 20. So again, Florida AM will go on defense. Jackson State will get the ball for the fifth time tonight. They've started at their own 20, their own three, their own 23, their own 30. Now their own 20. Three times. They have been turned back on fourth down in short situations. One time they've had to punt tonight. Here's a team that hasn't lost three straight since W.C. Gordon was coaching, and that was in 1991. James Carson, Jackson State's mentor right now, who's never lost three in a row as the head coach. Flag is in offside. Interception. Oh, uh, it was uh, in motion. The receiver who was in motion started toward the line of scrimmage before the ball was snapped. So we're going to get illegal procedure against Jackson State. A minute, 58 seconds remaining in this, the first half of the first annual Thurgood Marshall football classic. One of the things that Jackson State has not done coming into tonight's game has been penalized a lot. They've only averaged about uh, two, four penalties a game and 30 yards per game, but they've been penalized about three or four times tonight. One good thing that they can be proud of is yet to make, make a five. turnover. No turnovers early going in the late minutes of the second quarter. Five yards, first to 15. Fifth penalty tonight for them for 69 yards. Our statistician Eric Moore making sure that I'm kept up on everything. Numbers incorporated, <laughs> he's called affectionately. First down and 10 from the 15 with a minute 58 to go. First half, 21-0 Florida A&M. 
They need something on the board before half. Right in motion. And they hand off to Duckworth. Still on his feet. Still spinning. And finally gets up close to the 25. Great acrobatic move by Duckworth as he does a spin from the outside inward to continue to advance the ball upfield. Picks up about 10 yards. Watch this move. Zoom. <laughs> Great job. Lunges forward. Bring up second down and six. Pick up of nine. Jeffrey Wright with the ball. Tucks it down the middle. Has the first down at the 30-yard line. Stop made by Patrick Boros, linebacker number 53 for the Rattlers of Florida AM. Fine job running the ball. Eludes one would-be tackler. Nifty cut here. Lowers his shoulder. Gets as much as he can. First and ten. Morris is the man in motion. Looking for Mars, he has it. Still on his feet and out to the 36-yard line. A gain of about seven. Short pass is okay, but they need to advance it a little further upfield. Under a minute to go. Clock continuing to run down to 45 seconds. Left in the half. Mark Washington barking out signals. Prevent defense is played by the Rattlers. Sylvester Mars, do they have any timeouts left? I don't think so. Jackson State, that's the problem. They have no timeouts left. The clock will stop while they move the chains for the first down, but they're going to have to hurry up and get something going. 30 seconds of time remaining. They I think they do have a one timeout remaining. They may be exercising that now. Yes. They do. Okay, so they are going to use that last timeout. And there's a timeout on the field. 30 seconds to go in the half. Bam Yu leading by three touchdowns. Along with Lem Barney. And we're here in Jackson, Mississippi with 30 seconds to go in the first half. And Jackson State with the ball in Fam Yu territory. They have it at the 43-yard line, but they need to put some points on the boards, trailing 21 to nothing. Big Pin is the man in motion. Washington under heat. Stands in there. Throws. Has it complete to Tory Big Pin. Incomplete. On the near sideline. That stops the clock with 24 seconds to go. What about a screen here? Florida a &M is playing a prevent defense. They've got three big guys rushing that's applying all the pressure. No blocking whatsoever. Let's try a screen here. Big Pin is not watching the ball in his hands either. Catch it, get out of bounds, preserve the clock. 24 seconds remaining in this, the first half. Well, the whole idea is to not let anybody get behind you. Swanigan starts in motion. There's the screen. Big pin has it. Can he get... He's still on his feet. Spins. Still going. Big pin. He's still, still going. Still good. Still not down. And finally job. stopped at the 12-yard line. Tory Big pin. What an effort by the young man from Murrah High here in Jackson, Mississippi. He's only 5'9", weighs under 180 pounds, but you would think he weighed 400. No question, he's like a 500-pound gorilla, and what does he do? Whatever he wants to do. Here it is again. Throw the screen, make him react to it. Bad tackling, bad technique. Look, reaching and grabbing. 36 yards on the run, and they just spiked the ball to stop the clock with 10 seconds left. The most exciting play of the day for the Tigers of Jackson State as Torrey Thickpin kind of wakes the crowd up. Absolutely, Charlie. Here it is again. Watch. One missed tackle. Two missed tackles. Three missed tackles. Four missed tackles. Everybody's just reaching and grabbing. Five missed tackles. He keeps on his feet, stays alive. Finally, the sixth tackle. Excellent job by Thickpin to advance the ball inside the 15. Second down and 10. Cleveland made and saved the day. Big Penn is the man in motion. Referee throws a flag. Delay of game will go against Jackson State. No, Too I don't much see time. a flag. Yeah, over near the uh, markers. Oh, way back there. Yes. They used to. 
Once again, you look at the effort. He goes backward, forward, and everywhere. <laughs> he walks, he talks. He's a real live show. Great job. Determined effort for Thick Pen. Great job. And it is a delay of game. It's going to be a five-yard penalty, moving the ball back to the 18-yard line. But more importantly, they need to get into the end zone with 10 seconds to go here in the miscommunication all the way. First half. Sylvester Morris along with Mark Washington. Sylvester Morris runs inside. The ball is thrown outside for a fade. Poor communication all together. The only the good thing about it, they only use three seconds off the clock. So they still have time to put it in the end zone. Well, they got two plays to try and do it. It's third down at about 15. Seven seconds. 007 registered on the scoreboard. Blitz. Da -da -ba -da. He off the back foot. Touch. No. Incomplete. In and out of the hands of the receiver. He was stripped. Daniel Guy. He's looking around wanting a flag, but it was a good defensive play. Or is there a flag down in the end zone? Darnell Vickers. There is, there is a, flag a flag down in the end zone. It'll be perhaps on the goal line if it is called interference. Here it is again. Great job by Mark Washington off the back foot. A little velocity on it. There it is. Great job by Vickers in stripping it. I don't know if that was a good call or not. I don't either, Charlie. It looked good. He looked like he had fine position, was not interfering with the receiver. Again, we're, we're paid to call it. They're paid to officiate it. First and goal. Two seconds to go at the three, two-yard line. Now, remember... Again, they have been down here before. Denied three times on fourth and inches. But this is not going to be a fourth down play. This is going to be a first down with two seconds to go. Which is worse. First and goal, and they're, they have to score on this one. They only have one opportunity, and the ball is at the two-yard line. They've driven from their own 20 now, and they've gotten down 78 yards later to the two of... Florida a and Charlie, I'm glad you asked me that question. What would I do if I was a coach in this scenario? <laughs> I'd go for a field goal. I really would. At least get some points on the board. Give your team a little hope that we can we can score because they have been turned around in three successive plays trying to gain inches on fourth down. It's third. It's first down and goal from the three-yard line, but again, two seconds remaining on the clock. I'm glad you love my opinion. Yeah. <laughs> Well, they're going to go for it. All or nothing. Coach is rolling the dice. The Mississippi gambler, yes, all James nothing, Carson. Yeah, all or nothing or nothing at all. He has Spencer, Duckworth, and Destry Wright in the backfield. Wide side of the field is to the top of your screen. And the quarterback keeps it. Throws. No good. Complete. The receiver, the tight end, Kendrick Travis, couldn't hold on, and we're at halftime. 21 to nothing is the score. There's Kendrick Travis, the freshman, 6'3", 223, trying for his first reception of the year. He said, I'm wide open. He's the wide ball was just not thrown well. He still had a chance to catch the ball. All he has to do is just concentrate, Charlie. There it is. A little low, but you, you, it's those type plays that make you the great receiver or the great running back. Again, Again off, the off the back, back foot, foot, bad techniques, no mechanics. He had a chance to catch it. He had it. It went right through his he hand. He had a chance to catch it. He didn't come up with the big play. Again, Jackson and State trailing 21-0 here in the first half. First annual Third Good Marshall Football Classic. Welcome back to Jackson, Mississippi, and the first annual Thurgood Marshall Scholarship Fund Football Classic. And we're at halftime, brought to you by Southwest Airlines. With fare so low, you have the freedom to go places you want to go. Welcome back here at halftime. I'm Charlie Neal. 21 to nothing is a halftime score. The Rattlers of Florida and m are trying to hand Jackson State their third straight loss at the start of the season. This is the first game at home for the Tigers of Jackson State. And, of course, they came up short just before halftime. Uh, Pat Bonner getting the start for 
Florida A&M at quarterback tonight has thrown two touchdown passes on drives that's covered 64 and 69 yards. They scored on a running play also. But right now, we want to go down and watch the Florida A&M marching band, the Marching 100. They have a new band director this year under the direction of Julian White. He replaces longtime back band director Dr. William Foster. Let's go down and enjoy the Marching 100.
21 to nothing is our halftime score. The 100, marching 100, the Rattler Band from Florida A&M. And we'll be back with more halftime activities in just a moment. Tinkle, Wee Wee, Piddle. We have a lot of cute names for it. Jackson, Mississippi, the first annual Thurgood Marshall Football Classic. I have the honor of having with me the mayor of the city of Jackson, Mississippi, Harvey Johnson, Jr. And Harvey, of course, this is the first time that this game of this magnitude, when we say the Thurgood Marshall Classic, has been played here. What does it mean to the city of Jackson? Well, it means quite a bit. First of all, we like to welcome you and BT, uh, BET, as well as uh, the people who are making this classic possible, all of the fans of Jackson, Mississippi. We think it's very important to have this inaugural event here. Uh, our city, which is progressive and dynamic, and it characterizes what Thurgood Marshall stood for. So we're very pleased to have you here. You're the first black mayor of Jackson, Mississippi. What's new and exciting uh, in your tenure since you've been here? Well, what's new and exciting is that we're moving forward to make this the city the best of the New South, a world-class city. We're working to improve infrastructure, housing, economic development, all of the things that are going to make this a very dynamic and changing city. I'm very pleased that the citizens of Jackson have entrusted me with this response and we're moving ahead with it. I know you are a product of a historically black institution, Tennessee State, exactly. another Tiger. So <laughs> when you root, all you say is what? Root for the Tigers, right? That's right. <laughs> uh, when we play Jackson State, a Tiger will win. <laughs> <laughs> no question about it. Also want to bring in, we talked about the Thurgood Marshall uh, Football Classic, the executive director of the Thurgood Marshall Fund, Johnny Parham. How important is this to the fund? It's extremely important because what we're doing here is raising money to support merit scholarships for 38 historically black public colleges and universities, of which Jackson State and Florida A&M are participants. So it's extremely important. As far as this uh, game here, do you think it'll come back to Jackson next year or are you going to move it around? Well, we're certainly looking very closely at repeating this here, but we also intend to grow into other cities because what we really are doing here is not just raising money, but we're also using the, the football classic as a catalyst to recruit students to all of the 38 historically black public colleges and universities. So it's extremely important that we not only concentrate on Jackson, but we will also grow into perhaps two. Our goal ultimately is to sponsor at least three classics per year in different cities around the country. All right. Uh, hopefully it'll be a success. This one looks like it started out on the right foot. Absolutely. Okay. Johnny Parham. Mayor, great to be back in Jackson. It's been a couple years since we've been here. Great hospitality. Well, thank you very much. It's always a pleasure to have you here. And coming back, come back again soon, please. All right. Let's go down on the field. The Sonic Boom of the South, the Jackson State University Marching Band, with the Prancing J-Sets doing their thing. Let's check them out right now.
DJ sets, and of course, the Jackson State University marching band. You saw the little Tigers there. Longtime Tiger mascot, David, Wavy Dave Chambers, not on the sidelines for the Tigers this season. He suffered a serious illness in July. It's limiting his physical activity. He's widely recognized as one of the nation's top collegiate mascots, and we want to say a very quick, speedy recovery to Wavy Dave, and hopefully we'll see him back on the sidelines next season. Right now, that's our halftime activities here from Jackson, Mississippi, brought to you by Southwest Airlines with fares so low. You have the freedom to go. 21 to nothing, fam, you leading. We'll be back with more in just a moment. You're the float. Let's get that account. <laughs> Highlights the scoring here. You'll see pinpoint accuracy with the firing of quarterback Patrick Barner as he throws the 18-yard score, first score of the day. To Lamb, here's the second score. To Quaim, nine yards. Jackson State trying to do something. They are stopped on fourth and inches. Great defense. This leads to the third score, running score by Greg Buchanan, four yards. Florida a &M up 21 to nothing. Here's an outstanding run by T Tory Thigpen. If effort and determination would get the ball in the end zone, they should have given him seven points here. He runs through a bevy of re defenders, all for naught. Get a second look at it. Just a great determined run by Tory Thigpen. Focused all the way, trying to advance the ball as far upfield as he can. The only other opportunity Jackson had to score with two seconds remaining in the game. It comes up for naught. Ball was thrown off the back foot by Greg Washington. Again, the intended receiver dove for it a bit low. They came up with nothing in the first half, Charlie. And again, for the second straight week, they have dominated time of possession. That is Jackson State by uh, almost nine minutes here, but they still have come up with nothing on the scoreboard. And they also have more yards than Florida A&M, 58 more yards. But uh, what's killed them is those fourth down possessions and attempts in which they have been unable to uh, have anything and make anything happen and, and gain the first down. They got all the way down to the one yard line on their first opening drive and came up empty handed. That's a 79 yard uh, convincing uh, run and throw catch combinations. But again, coming up very short on fourth down and inches at the goal line. So you're looking at Brian Reynolds, sophomore out of Jackson, Mississippi, preparing to kick it off as Jackson State will start the second half, trailing 21 to nothing. Fine kickers as Jackson State have under the tutelage of James Toe Hartfield. I was a holder for him during my years at Jackson State. An outstanding point after touchdown uh, kicker as well as field goals. Uh, had an opportunity with the San Francisco 49ers. Florida a &M, fielded by Demetrius Bendros. He brings it out. Bendros stopped at the 15-yard line. So that's where Florida a &M, leading 21 to nothing, will start the third quarter. We'll be back in just a moment. You've heard Lim Barney as we start the third quarter here in Jackson, Mississippi. As many times as they've thrown the ball tonight, that is FAMU 15. And coming into the day's game with all the passes, they average 46 passes a game. They've only been sacked four times as is the FAMU quarterback. So the offensive line has done a great job. Tremendous job in blocking for Patrick. Bonner trying to get that job has not thrown an incompletion tonight. This one goes complete. He certainly hasn't. Only one that didn't go for the plus column. He threw one interception. Karan White. On the reception there, BT proud to be a contributor to the Third Good Marshall Scholarship Fund, which offers four-year merit scholarships to help students achieve their educational dreams. On behalf of BT's Mad Sports, a $1,000 donation will be made to the scholarship fund. Second down. 
Loss. A gain of nine. Second and one. Here's Bonner rolling out to the right. Stops. And it takes off. And gets yardage for a first down out to about the 23-yard line. Deception. What composure. They say he's probably the smoothest in terms of pure passers of the three quarterbacks. Mike Moran, Jose Laureano, and Pat Bonner. And he gets the first opportunity to start right. in three games. I think Chardet sang a song about him. Smooth operetta. <laughs> <laughs> and he may have earned himself the starting job tonight if he continues the performance he's put up. Now, when you talk about a tough hard-nosed quarterback. Jose Laureano probably is the toughest. He transferred from North Carolina State. Look and here's this. another one. Kanan Lamb with a first down out across the 40 to the 42-yard line with that reception. 14 of 15 going into that pass. Make it 15 of 16 passes. And that one's good for 13 yards. Look at that the gives composure. him 183 on the night. Composure. He finds an open receiver. Lamb being covered by Cecil Forbes Jr., Good tackle. However, he's got to close down on him when the quarterback is scrambling. First down and 10 from the 42-yard line. Played at Temple a year ago. That is the quarterback. This one is Jacquey Nunley reversing his Look score. out. Look Watch out. It. This could this be six. Trouble. This is trouble. This could be six. Let's see. Finally knocked out of bounds by Jackson State's Monty, Monty Gatlin. But look at the yardage that Jack Wayne Nunley picked up. Rookie of the year last year, ranked number four in the NCAA in receiving yards, ninth in receiving, number one in the MEAC. Charlie, we talked about him at the top of the telecast. It's a quick out. Now watch the poise. Elude a few defenders. He's got the presence of mind to find the wall. He forwards another tackle, gets out, picks up valuable blocking. Boom, look at that. 30 yards on the catch and run. Last year, a lot of times they call it the Rack Boys. Run after catch. How many yards are you able to gain after you catch the ball? Most of the times they drop right away tonight. Tonight, here's a man wide open. And again, at the three-yard line. Fumble! And a fumble. Let's see who has it. Jackson State may have come up with it. So the pass was complete. But then we have a fumble, and it was complete Mitchell. to Mitchell. Cedric Mitchell, his second reception of the night. But Jackson State comes up with it. Dwayne Johnson comes up with the fumble recovery. Here it is. Nifty move. Great strip there. Great strip. 58, Dwayne Johnson comes up with the fumble. Second turnover by the Rattlers, one by way of interception. This one coming by way of the fumble. On five possessions tonight, three times they've scored. Once they had an interception, that is FAMU, and this one ends on a fumble. So when they don't make a mistake, they put it in the end zone. Very convincing drive directed by Patrick Bonner. Hitting wide receivers who wide receivers who were wide open. Again, the rack run after catch was outstanding. Opportunistic is Jackson State's defense here. First and ten on their own one yard line. Not much running room. Destry Wright trying to get a little breathing room. Almost stopped in the backfield. Would have been a safety had he not gotten the past the line of scrimmage. Again, the offensive line is not doing a sharper job as blocking for the runner tonight as they did in Memphis against Tennessee State. Again, almost coming up with the safety there. They got to disallow the penetration by the defensive line. Ranked number three in the SWAC this week, the offense of Jackson State against the run or with the run. Third best running offense in the Southwestern Athletic. Hello, Conference. Chicago. And that is Ulrich Johnson who went off sides. He was the MEAC defensive player of the week against Norfolk State. He had seven tackles. He had five unassisted, two interceptions, returned one for 30-yard touchdown. Partridge on a pair trip. Right. <laughs> got an outstanding ball game. Here he goes offside, a bit uh, anxious, but I'm sure uh, A&M was on a blitz then, and he just couldn't slow up that momentum. Had four interceptions a year ago, an All-American candidate in Ulrich Johnson. As you look at Mark Washington, ranked seventh in the swack in passing this week. He's got good mechanics, but he's got to quit throwing the ball off of his back foot. He has to set and throw with the velocity 
because he has a strong arm. And but yet he has not thrown a touchdown pass this year. In three ball games, just the third ball game. He certainly had an opportunity with two seconds remaining in the uh, first half, but again, throwing off his back foot with no velocity on it, threw it low. The receiver really didn't have a great opportunity to catch the ball. He had a chance, but not an opportunity, and it came up incomplete. Tigers trying to go to break the 0-2 string. High formation. Duckworth in motion. Destry Wright breaks outside, still running. Struggles up oh, to Spencer. the 20-yard line. Or oh, is that Spencer? Spencer yes. Spencer Bill Spencer, Clip. who uh, was out of Carroll High, went to Syracuse uh, before coming here, matriculating to Jackson State. He was a All-American in high school at Archbishop Carroll. Broke his leg his senior year, and he was recruited not only by Syracuse, but also Michigan was a team that was really hot on him. But he decided to go to Syracuse. Things didn't work out for him there, and he came to Jackson State. That's true. There's Destry Wright turning the corner to the 25-yard line on second down. Make it a second down. That was a first down play. Gain of four, second down and six. Spencer played very well uh, last and, week. Scored, yes, against scored uh, State. a touchdown against Tennessee State. There was no efficiency, no loss of efficiency coming off that broken leg injury. We thought we'd see uh, Brian Gardner a little bit tonight also, number nine. Indeed. We've seen Rhodes, we've seen Spencer, we've seen Duckworth, and of course, Destry Wright. On second down, six. The pass. Tory Thigpen has it, and he has a first down out to the 32 yard line. Dick holds that right arm like, like it may be a little banged. See it? So he's holding his right arm. Yeah. He'll be all right. Yes, he will. <laughs> Particularly if he makes another run like he did uh, late in the uh, second quarter. James Carson, 47, 23 in point is his record. 28 and 8 in the last three years. Two first place finishes, one second since taking over as the head coach here. Cutback. Not much running room there as it is smelled out by Ulrich Johnson on Destry Wright, or is that, yeah, Wright on the carry. The help from number 28 coming up from this. Here it is. Score of tacklers, number 26 also in there on the stop. Jonathan Walker. Good job, good force, good feel, good containment. Make it. Second and ten. Just barely getting back to the line of scrimmage. Oh, he's blowing a whistle. In the stands, and I don't understand what that is. You can hear it. Gain of a couple. Out to the 35-yard line. Offensive line look uh, befundled then because of the fact of the whistle. I don't know if they heard it, but I know we sure heard it up here. <laughs> Swanigan checks in. Duckworth checks out on third down at seven. 9.05 remaining in this the third quarter. Back to pass. Washington throws complete to Swanigan on the near sideline. First down. Right at about the 44-yard line. Wendell Ashley, Ashley on the stop, right? Defensively. Someone has to step up offensively. Both uh, both units, offensive unit as well as defensive unit, they're going to need some big playmakers, Charlie. They've, they've shown uh, ineffectiveness in two ball games. We've had a chance to view them. And uh, now here in their third ball game, which is looking like they may end up being 0-3 after this ball game, if something big does not happen from someone on the offensive unit or defensive unit. Pitch back to right, turning the corner. Still on his feet and knocked out. Over the midfield stripe into Florida and M territory at the 48. Pick up about eight yards. Good blocking at the point of attack for the Tigers of Jackson State. Good pitch down low where you could see it. Does not break his stride. Picks up eight easy yards. Bring up second down and two. And this is the way they started the first half of the ball game. The opening kickoff, they drove. 
all the way down, got to the one. They've had a couple of long drives. They just haven't been able to put it into the end zone. Indeed. Destry has had an outstanding night again on the ground, two yards shy of 100. This is Spencer. He goes straight into the gut. Pick up of a couple. Down to the 42, 43 yard line is Bill Spencer. He's saying, give it to me, coach. Call my number. Let me have it, man. He's ready. Archbishop Carroll High is his alma mater, Washington, D.C. He said he really likes it down here. He likes the coaches. He said they seem to care about you. Much better atmosphere, he said, than he was felt in Syracuse. I even asked him about being going to Syracuse, let's say, than maybe some of the other historically black schools, even Howard University in Washington, D.C. He said none of them came after me. None of them recruited me. Wow. So a lot of times when the big boys are coming after you, like the Michigans and the Notre Dames and the Florida States and a lot of coaches uh, at historically black schools maybe feel they don't have a chance at recruiting those young men, so they don't go after them. You know, the recruiting budgets are not the greatest, so why waste your time when you, you feel you don't have a chance? But a lot of these young men would go to the school. They just need somebody to prompt them. No question about that, Charlie. Play action. Washington throws, and it's incomplete. Out of bounds. Well, I question the pass play as well. The play selection, it was only a three-yard out to Torrey Thickpen. Play action pass here. He should be looking at that. Look, quick pass. On third and eight. Yeah, great coverage out here on the left side by number two, Russell Parker for FAMU. Great defense. The defense has been stingy all evening. They've given up the yards, but they haven't given up the points. So that's the most important stat you can have. Big pin in motion. On the option, here's Destry Wright trying to get outside. Great job by the blocker. And he gets blocker. the first down and run out of bounds on the far sideline in front of the Florida a and bench by Jonathan Walker. He also had some help. Great job by the up block and blocking there for Destry Wright. He's over 100 yards for the second night. Second ball game anyway. 120 a week ago for Destry Wright. Tenth leading rusher in the SWAC, number five in scoring. Destry Wright from the eye formation. First and ten at the 31, 32 yard line of Florida A&M. And that Spence. cutback by Spencer tripped up right as he cut through the line of scrimmage. And by Kermit Graham. And Othello Vaughn. Spence is quite acrobatic. Yes, he is. Second down after a gain of about two. They'll call it three. Second down and seven. Ball just inside the 30. They pin him again in motion. Option, right. Breaks through. Tripped up at the last minute by Jonathan Walker. And he's about a yard shy of a first down at the 23. Fine job here by Walker. Destry may still be running had he not got one ankle. Trips him up. Pick up of about six. It'll bring up third down and one. At the 23. Jonathan Walker out of Miami, Florida. Spence. Spencer. And he gets the first down to the 20. Young blood on the stop defensively for Florida AM. Have a flag? We may. Let's see. All sides it. against Florida and M. We do have a penalty flag. So fan you whistle for all sides. First down any way they take it. If they decline it, it's still first down, but I'm sure they'll take the five yards. Kills the stats on the running back Spencer, but we'll take the we'll take the yards. Yeah, a couple extra yards, though. Free yardage. We'll take it. Clock running down, 5.45 remaining. 
in the third quarter. Hal Rose is now set in the backfield. He's deep in the eye behind Spencer. Rhodes goes in motion. Makes a trip right. Quarterback keeps it. He could get five. He could. Touchdown. Touchdown, Jackson State. Somebody has to step up. Mark Washington on the run. His first rushing touchdown this year. And he takes it in all the way. From the 14-yard line. Great job. Three-step drop. Quarterback draw all the way. Good blocking here by Spencer. When Rhodes got, went in motion, he pulled the line back out of the middle. Again, great job by Mark Washington getting it into the end zone for their first score of the evening. Good job of blocking at the point of attack. You see bodies being thrown all the way on the ground. Fine job by Mark. Brian Reynolds for the point after it's up. Counter. And it is good. And Jackson State's on the board. 21-7, 5-27 remaining in the third quarter. 99-yard drive for the broadcast provided by the Ramada Coliseum, Jackson, Mississippi. The Ramada Coliseum offers southern hospitality and warm attentive service for each guest. For reservations, call 601-969-2141. This portion of today's game brought to you by Thrifty Renter Car. The mistake by Florida and m the fumble at the goal line resulted in a 99-yard Zooming the clock drive. Impressive drive by Jackson State. Indeed. This will be Antoine Flowers. He'll down it in the end zone. And it'll be brought out to the 20. First down and 10. That's where Florida and M will go to work. Leading by two touchdowns. The last drive. 16 plays. 99 yards and took up 7 minutes and 10 seconds off the clock. Very impressive. Ball control all the way. Culminating on a 17-yard quarterback keeper by Mark Washington. Here's the kicker. Brian Reynolds talking with your pal. Yes, James Tohartfield. Leading kicker here at Jackson State. As you look at Pat Bonner. Bonner from Anderson High, Fort Lauderdale. And we have the first incompletion of the game. That one intended for Kanan Lamb, and he just couldn't get the handle. Had a little steam on it as well. First Sorry. incompletion for Bonner. Bonner in terms of to his own receivers. He did throw one to a Jackson State defensive <laughs> back. Certainly did. Here it is again. A lot of heat on it. A little low and away like a fastball pitcher to a fastball hitter. <laughs> <laughs> That's not Mark McGuire or Sammy Sosa out there. Pass on the far side. Complete to Jack Wade Nunley. Nunley up across the 25 to about the 27. Gain of seven. It'll be third and three. Again, Charlie, this is one of the reasons, uh, if we could see that again, good catch, good throw, and a good run. Uh, the defender, Rashad Anderson, is grabbing. You've got to wrap up. You've got to wrap those receivers up. The receivers are quite elusive with a lot of speed. Brings up a third down and about four. Big down here defensively for the Tigers. First down, Nunley with the reception. Across the 30 to the 31. Jacque Nunley. How many punts have Florida and m attempted tonight? Florida and m has punted the ball none. <laughs> what <laughs> is that telling you? <laughs> they're not punted at all. The two drives ended on interception. One ended in a fumble. The other three, they scored. Seven receptions for Nunley. Actually, Jackson State's only punted once. That's because of the fourth down problems that they've had. This one complete on the near sideline to Cedric Mitchell. Mitchell being covered very loosely over there. Cecil Forbes never saw the receiver. You cannot take your eye off the receiver. Bad techniques be deployed there by Cedric Forbes. Second down and two after the gain of eight. DBs look like they're a little uh, frightened. <laughs> Say the least. For sure as many. And it's complete for a first down into Jackson State territory. And that's complete to Demetrius, Demetrius Bendros. 
First down. Cool, calm, smooth operator. Stands in the pocket looking for someone to open. Attempts to run. Sees an open receiver. Nice touch to Bendross. A little sponge type. Yes. You know, when a man is close, you don't want to throw it too hard. Like a rock. That's right. Now when it's downfield 50 yards, that's when you have to gun it. Play action again. Roll out to his left. Looking as a man in the post. Could be intercepted here. Incomplete. Flag down, maybe holding. That was intended for Nunnally. Or was that... No, that was Bendros, the intended receiver, who's very, very fast. One of the fastest men on the team runs somewhere between a 4-2, 4-3-40. Whatever you call it, that's still fast. <laughs> can't drive that fast. No, you can't. <laughs> Not to control the steering wheel, anyway. That's what professional professional scouts are looking for. And we have a lot of scouts in this ball game tonight. There was quite a few scouts at the uh, Tiger practice yesterday, and I'm sure it was the same with the Rattlers practice. So a penalty against Florida A&M, holding one of the few that they've uh, amassed this evening. It's hard to believe that there are two quarterbacks that could be categorically called a little better than Patrick here, Patrick Bonner. He has shown me a whole lot of poise, Charlie. He completed 107 of 202 passes at Temple for 1,561 yards and seven touchdowns on a team that was struggling last year. Won only three games. No pressure. Up the middle. Running room. And he's back across midfield into Jackson State territory down to about the 48-yard line. Pick up of about eight. On a first and 20 play. So it'll be second down and about uh, 12, we'll call it. Forget uh, part of today's game, sponsored by Western Union. It's the fastest way that you can send money worldwide. Jerry Butler, Western Union. <laughs> <laughs> send the <a> telegram. <laughs> send the <a> right away. <laughs> it is second and 12. Those only the goodies are not going to be right. Bonner Ooh. has it complete. He Ooh. threaded the needle that time to Bendross. And he has a first down at the 33-yard line of Jackson State. Throwing the ball with pinpoint accuracy, Charlie. He's standing in the pocket, a lot of poise. But again, a great deal of credit and a great deal of success to Patrick Varner has to go to his offensive line. They're giving him a lot of time. He's looking for second, secondary receivers, well as primary receivers, and at times throwing to thirdary receivers. Does this remind you a little bit of the old Mississippi Valley gunslinger offense Indeed. that they had years ago with Rice? Gary Rice, Willie Todd. Right. Later. Oh, look at that, making him look good. Cannon, Kanan Lamb. Made him look real good. Pass was way out of his reach, but again, concentration and focusing and WBIH. And watch, here it is. He's looking downfield. Now he looks back out to Lamb, a little low and away. Great job on concentrating on the ball, looking it into his hands. Outstanding skills by Lamb. Great receivers can make quarterbacks look even greater. No question about that. They get balls with you. They catch one things that you don't think they should catch. Good trip up. First down is gained, however. I think it was about third and three. He picks up about three and a half. And it was Jason Marshall who tripped him up to keep him from gaining any more yards. Number was, 99. He was about to put it in gear. Fake pass here. Got a lineman off the ground. They got out of position. There's a trip. He may be a little shy. Jason Marshall was the man who made the stop. That'll bring up a third down if they did not get it. And short. A few inches. They didn't. Third and inches. Midfield short yardage and goal line. These are big plays for the defense. Hand off to Williams. Williams. Williams has the first down and he's close to the 20. Stopped at the 21. Good job of blocking up front by the big guys for Florida AM. They're just piling Tiger defenders back, and that gives the back an opportunity to cut off their tails. And again, Williams doing what he does best. Advancing the ball upfield for first down yardage. Mike first and Ma 10 at their Jackson State's 21-yard line. Mike Moran was the quarterback who started the Hampton game. He backed up Quincy Carter uh, in Georgia, uh, who's at Georgia now, in high school at uh, Atlanta Southwest to Cal High. Was being called by Patrick Bonner. Bonner throws, has it complete. 
And Bendros dropped at about the 13-yard line. Sean Anderson on the cover. Moran backed up Sampson, Odeman Sampson, last year. In fact, Moran comes from a long line of quarterbacks in his family. His dad played quarterback at Alabama A&M. His uncle played quarterback at Florida A&M. So he, was, he will be back next year. It's in the blood. But uh, Loriano and Bonner, this is their senior year. And they're going to have to be replaced. Whoever comes in and makes the gets the job at quarterback. Bonner stands in there, throws, has a complete to Nunley. Nunley, not anything, nowhere to run that particular time. Martha Rees and the Vandellas, good As play. Wooten was there on the stop. Wooten would help from number 58 coming from his linebacker position, Dwayne Johnson. We bring up a third down, third and about four. Ball resting just inside the 15 at the 14 of Jackson State. Again from the shotgun, Pat Bonner. Not only in motion. Bonner looks left, throws left. Touchdown! What a catch. Not only. Touchdown! Florida and m 14 yards on the pass from Bonner to Nunley. Watch, watch again, Charlie. Great blocking here at the point of attack. Nunley comes out of the backfield in motion. Victimized on the play is number 27, Harold Root. Great touch, pinpoint accuracy again all evening. No one could catch it but Nunley. As he hurdles over the barrier, I give him a 10 on the hurdle. Bonner actually injured his shoulder against Hampton in the first game of the season. But we're going to get excessive celebration. Yep. For some reason or another, I don't know who they called it on, but uh, it's going to be a long extra point, about 35 yards for Juan Toro, who is perfect this year. 12, uh, 13 of 13 right now. Came into the game 10 of 10. Now let's see if he can make it 14 of 14. Count it. I'm going on the left. L I N D. Count it. It's up. It's long enough, and it is Count. good. All right. Wow. And we'll take a timeout. 28 to 7 is our score. Again, 14 yards from the quarterback, Pat Bonner. He's thrown three tonight. This is number three, and Bonner. On the reception, his third touchdown reception of the season. The word is out about BET Tonight. Whose mission it is to keep us fully informed. BET Tonight, the new season. That x ray runway 7, hold, correction runway 1 2. With Super Plus detergent gasoline keeping vital engine parts clean. You can take wings. I believe I can touch the sky. I believe I can fly. Super Plus. Everybody has a reason to be happy in Tigerland. <laughs> 28 to 7 is our score. Three seconds remaining here in the third quarter. Two possessions for Tennessee State in that quarter. One for Florida AM. Make it the opposite way around. Two possessions for FAMU, one for Jackson State. And Tory Bigpen will down it in the end zone. As we end the third quarter here, 28 to 7. When we come back, it'll be Jackson State to start the fourth quarter with the ball first down and 10 at their own 20, trailing by three touchdowns. Everybody loves the circus, including me. So a few years back, I started one. The circus is coming to town. The only African-American circus in the country. I fly from city to city on Southwest Airlines. Their little fares let me fly ahead of the circus so I can spread the word. Hip hop under the big top. We've got the best show under the big top, and Southwest has the best one over it. You are now free to move about the country. Today, people who didn't send the money Western Union and the heartbreak it caused meet Sue and her boyfriend. Ex-boyfriend. Ex-boyfriend, Mike. 
What happened, sir? My car broke down. I called Mr. Wonderful here. Some money, I said. And he didn't use Western Union. No, and it took forever. I had to spend hours with the tow truck guy. Mm hmm. Meet Sue's new fiance, the tow truck guy, Lowell! Hey, it's your money. Use Western Union, the fastest way to send money. Stop. The fourth quarter here in Jackson, Mississippi. Charlie Neal and Lynn Barney. First down and 10. Jackson State with the ball at their own 20 yard line. Trailing 28 to 7. From the shotgun, they operate with Mark Washington still in at quarterback. Jackson State has not made any mistakes in terms of fumbles and turnovers tonight as Destry Wright gets the ball and struggles back to the line of scrimmage. As we look at the third quarter stats, we look at the time of possession, of course, again, Jackson State has a Great advantage there by eight minutes, but they trail on the scoreboard. And now FAMU has taken the lead in the stats department in terms of total yards. 324 passing, 414 total to 386 for Jackson State. Although Jackson has rushed for a number of yards in the game, 225. Destry with over 100 of those yards. And they keep the ball on the ground again. Jackson State running out close to the 24-yard line was Duckworth. He'll be replaced in the lineup by Torrey Thigpen. Third and about five dictates passing situation. That's why Thigpen perhaps is... Check back into the lineup. Indeed. Swanigan in motion. Blitz. Good pickup. Corey Thigpen has the reception, has the first down, and is out to the 37-yard line. Torrey Thigpen, and good read by the quarterback, who's a little slow getting up. He was really banged around back there with that blitz put on by Florida A&M. Let's look and see what happens when he gets hit. Big pressure here. Here it is. Great job here by Thigpen, the rack, to run after the catch. Reminds me a lot of Jimmy Smith. Outstanding uh, all-pro wide receiver with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Certainly does. And here's uh, Mark Washington coming over to the sideline. New, new quarterback enters the game. T.C. Taylor. Freshman quarterback out of Magnolia, Mississippi. Red shirt of the year ago. Has not played at all this season. But he'll get the call now. He's a left-hander. South ball. Reverse spiral on the ball. Good play Havoc. First and ten. Pitches left and a fumble. Well, they didn't give it up. There were two fumbles tonight by Jackson State. Uh, opportunistic. Big pin comes up with the fumble. Both of these schools over the years, Lem, as you look at it once again, have sent a number of players to the pros. You had a quite a class when you graduated. 68, they sent 11 to the NFL out of Jackson State. Of course, you mentioned Jimmy Smith, who's now earning his keep with the Jacksonville Jaguars of the NFL. I played with his father here at Jackson State, homeboy of mine, cross-town neighbor, Big Jimmy. Back to pass. He, well, he fooled me. It was somebody else I was thinking about this <laughs> left hand. <laughs> Maybe he's ambidextrous. Ambidextrous, <laughs> yeah. Or amphibious, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> at the 40-yard line, it's complete to Tory Thickman. <laughs> Great job here. Fine throw. I like the release. Steps up. Throws an over-the-head spiral. Great job by Thickpen. Out to the 40. Brings up a third and seven. And Mark Washington is back in there. Maybe that's why. It wasn't <laughs> who I thought was throwing the ball. It wasn't TC. It was a TC. Swan get in motion. Running, trying to get to, gets a block and gets close first to down. the first down. Should it have does. it right at about the 48-yard line. Somebody has to step up. He scored the only touchdown thus far in this game. He's got that feeling. Good job, James Brown. He's got the feeling. He knew where he had to go. Indeed. And he's finally brought down by Larry Williams out of Miami's American High. First and 10, Jackson State. Trailing by three touchdowns, 11 minutes, 45 seconds to go in this one. It's 
Stands in there, throws in and out of the hands of the intended receiver. In front of the Jackson State bench, that was Daniel Guy. Well, we got an opportunity. I want to say hello to all the gang up in Washington, D.C., who competed in the Mid-Atlantic Police Motorcycle Rodeo Competition today down in front of the Capitol. What's your boys, man? Yeah. I'm sure they had a good time. Had a big boat ride Thursday night, a little cookout last night, and competition today. You missed a ride in the cookout. I know yeah. what you No, missed. I got the boat ride in. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> down to Potomac, I call it, the Potomac on Thursday okay. night. <laughs> Incomplete. And this one is incomplete on the near sideline. The receiver says, I thought I had it. This portion of the day's game brought to you by Thrifty Car Rental. So to bring up a third down and 10. You could see the rustiness in the receiver, attended uh, receiver Daniel, Daniel Guy. Guy. Missed an early screen that could, he still could be running. Here was one I thought was in there. And catchable but he did not come come up with it third and ten blitz high snap fumble and finally the quarterback Washington picks it up but loses yards so it'll be a fourth and 13 and that'll bring on the punter for the first time tonight for Jackson State and Kenny Page. It's a high snap. Good job there by Mark with his verticality. He's got to jump down on that ball, though. Nunnally from the 12. Reverses his field. Looking for block. And gets out to the 15. There's a timeout on the field. Time running down on Jackson State, 10:47. That's the time remaining here in the contest. 28-7, Sam U. Coliseum, Jackson, Mississippi. Ramada Coliseum offers Southern hospitality and warm attentive service for each guest. For reservations, call 601-969-2141. Bonner tonight, 27 of 29, 324 yards and three touchdowns. He had an interception, but he's completed it to six different receivers. Three different receivers have caught touchdown passes. Lamb, Quaheen, and Nunnally. You think he says this job is mine? I'm sure he is, Charlie. If this job was mine. <laughs> <laughs> or is that if this world was mine? <laughs> he's playing like the world is his. He! In the grass, should have been. Well, this is not the pros. <laughs> But he got it complete for loss. Uh, over, Back to the seven or eight. Overhead left-handed sky hook for a completion. Kenny Two Williams. Williams. <laughs> Here's the man, Eric Chandler, holding on to his jersey. It's got to be frustrating for a lineman. You, you got the guy wrapped up. You, you, you're taking his jersey off of him, and he still manages to complete the pass, even though... He lost eight yards on it. From his end zone, he stands. Heaves it long downfield. Nobody there. Misread between him and the uh, intended receiver who cut the pattern off a little short. Good coverage uh, defensively in the secondary. It looked like they were in a combination yeah. uh, zone coverage. Ben Bendros was the man who was closest to the ball. I saw a game earlier today in which the quarterback threw the ball away like that, and they called it for intentional it ground. Well. Yes, I watched that game. It was... Uh, Texas and Kansas State. Correct. Kansas State put a whooping on him, like Muhammad Ali would say. A whooping. Third down and about 18. Play out incomplete. Beat himself to death. Or was it a, is it a lateral? No, it was a little bit forward. Yep. So it goes incomplete. So the first time tonight on the incompletion, Both that teams we'll have see... The Florida and M punt in a way. Jackson State punted on this last possession, and now we see Florida and M forced to punt at fourth down and 17 yards. And that'll bring in TJ Smith, averaging 40.3 yards per punt. Longest is 46 this year. You'll need one here. Is he deep in his own end zone by three yards from the uh, end line? Good snap, good catch. 
Bombs away. Good hit. Big pin. Fumbles. Sam, you may have it. Great job by the by the, the defender coming down. And they do. Two, Russell Parker. I want you to watch this again, Charlie, if we can see it. He comes down. He's a trained killer. Trained killers are like heat-seeking missiles. They got to go for the ball. Now, Parker is number two. Watch. As the ball pops out, he's hit. Watch him dive. He's giving up his body. Scoops it up. Great job in the fumble recovery for Russell Parker. Time out on the field. Another opportunity for Fam Yu after the muff by Tory Thigpen. 9.49 left, and we'll be back. It's not a fumble because he never had possession, but it touched him and it allowed Florida AM to come away with the first turnover by Jackson State today as Russell, Russell Parker, Parker scooped it up. So it'll be a first down and 10 in Jackson territory. Just over the midfield stripe for Florida A&M. Pat Bonner has gone all the way and put up some impressive numbers tonight. Indeed. And he's looking to put up some more. And he has it complete. At the 40-yard line, just about a yard shy of a first down to Vendros. Nunley, or was Charlie. it Nunley? Yes. 85, okay. 85, Nunley. Well, look at 86's jersey. Why is it off of him? <laughs> <laughs> Linebacker stripped it. <laughs> Linebacker stripped it. Coming up on the stop is number 38, Cecil Forbes, Jr. Nunley had first down yardage, but he tried to evade Forbes. Look at Williams. Ken Williams struggles, bounces, twists, and turns for a first down inside the 30 to the 29 of Jackson State. The official almost got caught up into the uh, currency there. Watch him as he turns his he, back. He's he just ran up. over his own uh, blocker, Karen White. <laughs> Officials caught up in that currency almost got ran over. <laughs> Umpire is the most dangerous position. Look at him. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> he don't know which way to go. <laughs> <laughs> the most dangerous position as an official in football. Got to be the umpire. A lot of traffic. And again is the quarterback sack this time and uh, Eric Chandler said you're not getting away from me this time not you, twice. you got away from me last time yeah. but well, I got you now well Scott Hook pass he barred, <laughs> uh, evades uh, Eric Chandler the first time but here he scrambles out Chandler keeps his eyes open here gets a little more than what he had at first and goes with the rodeo type sling down 11, I, give, I give him 10 points on that 11 yards on the loss only the fifth sack this year that Florida and M is allowed. Stockville, Mississippi. Probably Henderson High. Out to Lamb. And incomplete. He never had it long enough to make it a completion. Well, he tried to run before he really watched the ball into his hands, Charlie. He's been outstanding all evening. Caught the first seven passes thrown in his area for valuable yardage here. A little nonchalantly, he doesn't WBI looking the ball in his hands. He's got to watch it in. Eight minutes, nine seconds remaining in this, the fourth quarter of the first annual. Very good Marshall football classic. There's a conversion. That's a pretty good percentage to really five or six. Really perfect. Third and 21 right now. Going long. And it's caught on the far sideline, but shy of a first down by Kanan Lamb. Right at about the 26-yard line. Still a few yards shy of a first down. A little retroposity there. Comes up about four yards shy. We spoke about the different receivers that they have completed the passes to tonight. Six different receivers this young man has found. Cool and calm goes Patrick Bonner. They're going to go for the field goal with Toro attempting it. Count, it's up. It's long enough, and it is good. The officials almost weren't in position. He is three for three in field goals this year, and he adds to his point total. Seven points for him tonight. Came into the game with 192. He's up to 199 right now. Today, people who didn't send the money Western Union and the heartbreak it caused. You say your dog called? Yeah, said he needed to. Seven minutes and 44 seconds to go here in the fourth quarter in Jackson, Mississippi. In the first annual Thurgood Marshall Scholarship Football Classic. You're looking at Jeremy Edwards. 
Ready to kick it off for the Rattlers, who lead it 31 to 7. And as the crowd starts to file out of Mississippi Memorial Stadium here in Jackson, Tory Thigpen at the three. Big Ben trying to get outside, bounced around, still on his feet, and out to the 30-yard line is where he'll be stopped. First down and 10, Jackson State at their own 30. Their second possession of the third quarter, fourth quarter rather. Third of the second half. Their first possession of the second half resulted in a long, sustained 99-yard 16 play drive that consumes seven minutes and ten seconds off the clock. They just gave up a buck on a punt return, which allowed Florida and M to drive down and kick a field goal. Six play drive. Interception! Touchdown. It'll be touchdown. Florida AM intended for Tory Thigpen, but he was nowhere to be found. And Darnell Vickers out of Edison High in Miami takes it all the way back. Four, six. Excellent break on the ball. Does Vickers go? Read the receiver quite well. Look at the quarterback. Great coverage. Great pick. Takes it in. Defensive back's dream. Great coverage there. Ball intended for number four, Courtney Harris. Great job. I thought he was going to do a Packers salute and jump into the stands. That's quite high, however. <laughs> yeah, if he jumped, he's super bad if he jumps up there. <laughs> Toro for his eighth point of the night. The kick is up, and it is good. Now, with the score, 38 to 7, with 718 remaining here in the fourth quarter. Let's look at the player of the game, and I think deservedly so, it should go to Patrick Bonner, the quarterback of Florida a &M, who got the nod to start tonight and probably earned himself the starting spot for the rest of the season. If not, we're going to have a talk with Coach Billy Joe. Yeah, brought to you by Thrifty Rent-A-Car. And here's one of his passes, a touchdown pass, and it goes to Kanan Lamb. It was his first one of the evening. And there's the stacks, 30 of 35, 341 yards, three touchdowns, and a touchdown. And with the score, 38 to 7, we'll be back. We're in Jackson, Mississippi. It's Thrifty Car Rental's 40th birthday, so let's get the show on the road. Call 1-800-4-CARS. There's something special going on at Thrifty Car Rental and Blockbuster Video. You rent a car from Thrifty, you get a free movie rental from Blockbuster Video. Just ask. When you rent a car at Thrifty, you'll drive home with a free movie rental from Blockbuster Video. Get the show on the road with Thrifty Car Rental and Blockbuster Video. Call 1-800-4-CARS. Charlie Neal, Lim Barnett is celebrating on the FAMU sideline. There is your quarterback of record, Pat Bonner, and player of the game. <laughs> yeah, and a big fella around me with a lot of hair. <laughs> there he is. Sumo wrestler. <laughs> Looks like he's got a brother out there as well. His name is Nua Salafi from Oceanside, California. I love him too. And Jeremy... Edwards makes sure this one is not returned. And it'll be brought out to the 20 for Jackson State. First down and 10. 7-13 is the time remaining in this one. Vickers with the interception return. Ran it back 34 yards. FAMU this year. Eighth interception for them for the season. Defensively, they're very strong, and we can see quite obviously that their offense is no mere joke. Strong on passing of Patrick Bonner. Three outside, outside uh, wide receivers that can run exact, precise routes, and once they catch the ball, can get it upfield.
apparently after the whistle blew, there was some extracurricular activity on the part of Jackson State. So it's a dead ball foul that will penalize them another 10 yards back to the 10 yard line. So instead of starting first and 10 at the 20, they'll start first and 10 at their own 10. T.C. Taylor is back in the ball game now. Quarterback. See if he's left-handed as you. <laughs> he was given witness to. <laughs> he was. <laughs> yes, yes, he, he is. is. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I wasn't wrong, and he scrambles up to the 16-17 pickup of seven. It'll be second down and three. I'll make it second down and 13. It was a first and. Well, they give him first and ten back at the uh, spot, so it is second and about three. Oh, they did move it back to the ten. Yes, they did. Second and three. Here he throws over the head of the intended receiver. Vickers almost Michael in the Swanigan. end zone again. He certainly was. Well, they've started in worse field position, Jackson State. On their one-yard line after Went 99 a yards, used up seven minutes off the clock, and put it in the end zone. 14-yard uh, scamper, 17-yard scamper, uh, quarterback keeper by Mark Washington is the only score that represents their efforts tonight. Third down, 13. And now back to pass again, overthrown everybody. He's just got to settle down. Over the head of Russell Parker. And Sylvester Mars, the intended yeah. receiver. He, if he'd have pulled it down a little bit, he may have had a completion. Yeah, if it had been just a little higher, uh, Parker would have had an interception. He's only 5'8", but he plays big. Secondary has been quite stingy for the Rattlers of Florida a &M. Clock stops awaiting the punt. Six minutes, 35 seconds remaining in this. The first annual Thurgood Marshall Football Classic. Not only is bad hit, received, bad hit run. by Page. Not a good hit at all, and it's down at about the 27-yard line. When things go wrong, about a 12-yard punt, 10-yard punt, a 10-yard punt, the worst of the year for that young man who's averaging over 36 yards per punt. Kenny and Red we'll Page. Oh, you have tonight 30 of 35, 341 yards, three touchdowns. These are all the different receivers who have caught his passes tonight. Kanan Lamb, 137 yards. Jackway Nunley, 106. Mitchell, 45. Ventros, 42. Quaheen with one reception, nine. Karan White, nine. And he is giving way. He is sitting down. There he is. And in is uh, Loriano. Jose Loriano is in at quarterback. He started last week against Hampton. I think he threw four touchdown passes, uh, Norfolk State rather, threw four touchdown passes last week. He may be the best athlete on the team. Could be, Charlie. They number said he's just like a running back back there. So Jose Loriano takes over now. Number one was the runner last play. Antonio Flowers from uh, Detroit. And he's a senior. Loriano back to pass. Heat on the backside. Throws incomplete. A little behind the intended receiver. If you remember last year in that overtime game. Raheem, the intended receiver. Florida a &M, Antonio Flowers was a big playmaker. In Certainly that game. was. Certainly was. Juan Toro, of course, the senior. He'll get a chance to play. A little more, maybe. Especially in situations like this. As Jackson State is about to lose its third straight game. First time that's happened since 1991, and the first time they've lost the first three games of the season since 1969. He has some room on the far side. Throws back and wide, wide open touchdown. Florida AM, and it's complete to Ode Michael out of Jacksonville, Florida, number 23. Twenty-seven yards. When a quarterback scrambles, defensive backs has to latch down to whatever receiver is in the area. We can't take it for granted that Lariano is going to run this ball. Wide open, O'Day. 
Those are the kind you miss, but he concentrated quite well. Certainly no pressure did. on him, no one around him. It is a good overhead aerial shot of that ball. Nice spiral. Way to look it in, big guy. And again, the celebration makes it a 35-yard uh, kick for Juan Toro. Going for his ninth point of the night, Juan Toro. If he makes this, he'll only need 23 to tie Jimmy Fortuno. Career record of 192 points. The kick is up, it's long enough, and it is good. So he's had 235 yard extra points. And let's take this time out for the McDonald's play of the game, brought to you by the irresistible taste that makes you say, if somebody said McDonald's, it occurred in the third quarter. And it was a determined effort and run after catch by the second quarter by one, I uh, should say, uh, Tory Thigpen. Just watch this. This is the McDonald's play of the game, left. Yes, it is, Charlie. Outstanding run, determined. As we counted before, five would-be tacklers. A determined effort, twisting, turning, maintaining his balance, and finally brought down. But an outstanding run by number seven, Tory Thickman. Brought to you by McDonald's. The irresistible taste that makes you say that somebody say McDonald's. To all beef patties, special sauce, lettuce. On all but three possessions tonight, Florida a &M has scored. Their first possession ended in an interception. Then they scored three straight times. That next possession ended in a fumble. Then they scored again. They punted, hit a field goal, and a touchdown. And again, Corey Big Ben, deep in his own end zone, will down it, and they'll bring it out to the 20. No, that's not Big Ben back there this time. Courtney that Harris. Courtney Harris, number four. So Jackson State trailing 45 to 7. And they were actually in this ball game. They took their opening drive, drove all the way down the field, got to the Florida NM1, was unable to get in on fourth down. That hurt them tremendously. And that kind of set the tone for the evening. Glenn. It did, Charlie. They missed on two other occasions on fourth and inches. Defenses uh, stiffen up for Florida a &M, and again, it turned down a drive to keep the drive alive by Jackson State, and as a result, they never got anything going until late or early going in the uh, third quarter where Mark Washington scrambled for 17 yards for the only score for the Tigers tonight. In fact, uh, neither team was able to do anything as far as scoreboard is concerned in the first quarter. But Van Houston came back and scored three touchdowns in the second quarter, one in the third, and three here. They scored three times in the fourth, one by way of field goal. On the pitch back. Trying to run to the right side. New personnel letting some, in the game. Letting some of the other reserves get an opportunity to see what they can do. That's Keith Fawcett out of Memphis of running a fullback or running back. 5'11", 205. This is where you need to look at some uh, reserve people because somebody needs to step up. When you're 0-3, we yes. asked Coach yesterday at practice, did he feel any pressure? He said, well, I remember when we were winning it all. I got a lot of pressure, so I don't. The only pressure I have is what I put on myself. Exactly. Those were and of course, in, de words. in defense of, of what's happened here, they lost uh, a bunch of seniors from last year's squad, 23 to be exact, and you know, 15 of them were starters, and you can't lose that many people in one year and without rebuilding. I mean, they have talent, but they have to make sure they put it all together. True enough, Charlie, and they can't they can't lean on that crutch all year long about the 22 seniors that they lost six of them going to the professional ranks there has to be somebody that has to step up because they had reserve players last year who should have been hungry enough thirsty enough to come into this season looking forward to playing they knew that those positions were open what do you do as far as regrouping now the, the task doesn't get any easier no it doesn't the SWAC schedule is coming up pretty soon next few ball games there'll be SWAC SWAC uh, games. And 
if there's any consolation, all of the losses were non-conference games. So maybe they've learned something. Maybe when they do, and they can still go through the conference and still win the conference if they go undefeated. Indeed, Charlie. And, and that's the thing I'm sure that they're looking at now. That's the only bright spot they can look to. These first three ball games have been pretty dismal. Defensively, particularly, secondary needs a great deal of improvement. And I wouldn't be surprised to see some changes in next, in next week's contest. They victimized 30-some points by Howard, 33 points by Tennessee State. 45 tonight. 40, and, and the game's not over. It's still 3 minutes, 22 seconds remaining in this game. But someone has to step up. Someone wants to be and has to be that go-to man. And the thing is, they had a team meeting yesterday after practice where the players got together without the coaches there. And each player, I mean, they talked about a gut check and, you know, making it happen. And it looked like it was uh, working, especially early in the ball game when they took that opening possession and drove all the way down the field but came up empty-handed. 79 yards, you're right, Charlie. And that may have been a stem off from the conversations that each of the captains had. Mark Washington talked to the defense, uh, to the offense, a couple of defensive ball players, secondary, talked to the entire defense, and they had some good things to say. And what I culminated it with and telling both units that the talk is good, but you still have to execute it on the field. Florida a &M is not going to come in here and lay down. No, they're not. And when you look at the numbers being put up as... T.C. Taylor airs it out. Yeah, trying to hit Sylvester Mars. You look at the numbers and the stats after this game is over, and if no one told you the score, you would probably think it was a one-point ball game. It wasn't a 38-point ball game. Right now, total yards, FAMU 459, Jackson State 446. And Jackson State has had the ball in terms of time, time of possession longer than Florida a &M has tonight. thing about it, Florida a &M converted uh, in necessary opportunities by putting points on the, on the board. Second week in a row, quarterbacks has thrown an interception for a touchdown to the opposition. Third down and 15. Florida M has a wholesale of uh, substitutes as well. A lot of clean jerseys out there. A little miscommunication there, Spencer. Spencer and the quarterback, T.C. Taylor. Bumping into each other. And make it third down. Third and about 14, we'll call it. T.C. back to pass. Rose has it complete. Not enough for the first down at the 45-yard line. There's another thing, Charlie, that I would have to complain about. Receivers not running necessary yardage routes once they catch the ball to complete the first down. Here he comes up now, Sylvester Morris, about four yards shy. And a little banged up. Yes. Good job here by TC, a little wobbler there. But a not, not enough yardage there. He's got to run it down to the 40. Maybe come back after he's made the necessary yardage and turn it upfield. Fourth down and three. They have not been successful on fourth downs this evening. As trying to get to blocking, but they turn it over again. On down. They get down to the Tennessee, uh, the Florida a and I want to say Tennessee State for some reason. <laughs> to the Florida a and 45-yard line, but that's, a, that's the fourth time tonight that they've been turned around on fourth down situations. You have to give a lot of credit to that defensive unit as well as the offensive unit for Florida a and uh, Clifton Moore is the defensive coordinator, does a great job with them over there. Indeed. They played three-phase football tonight. Offense, defense, and special teams. They certainly have. There's the big fella, number 77 from California. Oh, yeah. Nua. I think Nua has a brother that's on the, on the team that's not dressed out. Man with the hair. Yeah. It's not a neck pad, age, ladies and gentlemen. Age of Aquarius. <laughs> it is second down. When the moon is in the seventh house. Jupiter Somebody's now. house. <laughs> Jupiter is aligned with Mars. Jose, Laureano, and a quarterback right now. Steps up. 
Good move. Boom. Field back block by number 23 for Florida a &M. Michael O'Day, who scored the last touchdown. Wow. This, now, this hurts because you don't a, see it coming. You don't see it coming, man. <laughs> I mean, it's no way you can prepare for it. Watch the linebacker, number 50, in pursuit. Dennis Thompson. Oh, wow. Where did he come from? Yeah, he'll be in the Whirlpool all day tomorrow for that. Here he is. Boom. Whiplash. Knock right on his back pockets. This could be the final play of the ball game. Well, they got one more. 30, 29 seconds ago. This could be the final play in this first annual Thoroughgood Marshall Football Classic. Temper's about to break out, but there's no, no, no need for that. Take the whipping, guys, and keep on ticking. Get ready for next week's ball game. Mariano's trying to hurry him up so they can get another playoff with seven seconds to go. Man, Clock running there. I don't think the referee's going to let him. I don't either. Good job by the official. 45-7, to seven, the final score here from Jackson, Mississippi. As Florida and m increases its record to 2-1, and one, while Florida and m Jackson State increases its record to 0-3, I should say. That's not an increase, and Florida and m goes to 2-1. and one. We'll be back to wrap things up from Jackson in just a moment. Jackson, Mississippi Memorial Coliseum and Stadium. Jackson, Mississippi, where Florida A&M has gone to a record of 2-1 and one with a 45-7 victory over Jackson State, dropping them to 0-3. First time that they started the season since 1969. The first time James Carson has lost three games straight since he's taken over as head coach seven years ago. This driving or uh, scoring started back in the second quarter with Florida A&M Getting on the scoreboard, Bonner, an 18-yard pass to Kanan Lamb, completing a seven-play, 64-yard drive that consumed 236 off the clock. The PAT was good. They led it 7-0. Then with 631 to go in the second quarter, Bonner hit a nine-yard pass to Quahim. That capped an eight-play, 69-yard drive that took up 332. The PAT was good, and it was 14 to nothing. Made it 21 to nothing with 2.10 left before halftime on Buchanan's three-yard run that clapped a seven-place 65-yard drive and used a minute 48 off the clock. PAT was good, 21 to nothing. Then with 5.27 left in the third quarter, Washington, the quarterback for Jackson State, scored on a 17-yard run, their only touchdown of the day. But it was a great drive. It was a 16-play, 99-yard drive that used 7 minutes and 10 seconds off the clock after they recovered a fumble by FAMU right at the goal line. They marched 99 yards for their only points of the game. But then with three seconds left in the third quarter, Bonner with his uh, second touchdown pass, or third touchdown pass of the evening, I should say, to Nunnally capped a 13-play 80-yard drive that used 519 off the clock. Again, Juan Toro with the PAT made it 28-7. Toro then hit on a 41-yard field goal with 744 left in the fourth quarter to make it 31-7. Then with 718 left, Vickers with a 34-yard interception return took it in 38-7 with the PAT. And then with 5.38 to go, Loriano got into the ball game and hit on a 26-yard pass to Michael, and that made it 45-7, to and that's the way it ended. Now let's look at the final stats in the day's ball game, and we looked at the yardage, and I said if you look at the, the, the stats in the day's ball game, it's going to be hard to believe that it was a 38-point difference in the score. Jackson State, 261 yards on the ground, only 196 in the air. But they had a total of 457 yards, only 10 yards less than Florida A&M. Of course, 36 minutes time of possession. They held the ball 13 more minutes than Florida A&M. Florida I tell you, Charlie, it was a, a game for points instead of uh, yardage. Uh, obviously, again, Jackson State didn't take... Uh, the opportunities that they had. Again, you got to give a lot of credit to the stingy defense that the Rattlers provided tonight. They deployed an outstanding defense. They put a lot of pressure on Mark Washington. But again, good ground control, good ball control. Uh, Destry, Destry right, 
ran the ball quite effectively, a little over 100 yards again tonight. There he is receiving his uh, uh, most valuable player for Jackson State uh, in defeat. But again, Coca-Cola sponsored. There's Carlos out there for Coca-Cola out of Atlanta. Great job. There's uh, Johnny. Uh, Parham. Who, yes, Parham. Outstanding. Uh, they were all at the uh, coaches luncheon yesterday. Sponsored by both Coca-Cola, U.S. Postal Service, and the U.S. Army, the recruiting services. Be all that you can be. One of the things Jackson State's going to have to do, they've been out giving up almost 500 yards a game in the first three ball games uh, on the, as far as the defense is concerned. Coming into today's game, 502, and they held Florida A&M to 467 today. But you've got to do something, especially on the pass defense. You can't allow people to just run rough shot over you when they put the ball in the air. That's correct. Charlie again the defensive backs the secondary for the last three weeks have played very lethargically they're not closing they're allowing receivers to uh, run loose routes and then they try to converge on them but with the elusiveness that receivers have today they're quite gifted very skilled very fast the rack as you mentioned already seed run after catch has been quite outstanding by all three teams they played this year Howard Tennessee State and now again tonight FAMU, who I think has some of the greatest receivers in all of pro in, in, in collegiate football. They certainly do. Uh, the average field position tonight for Florida A&M, they started at their own 32. Jackson State, the own average field position was starting at their own 18. And of course, uh, they uh, come home again to next week. They play Mississippi Valley. And then they take on Texas Southern. That's the next couple home games for Jackson State, Florida A&M remains on the road for the next two games, going to Atlanta next week for the Atlanta Football Classic against Tennessee State. That'll be a good one, watching these quarterbacks. You know, uh, Leon Murray from Tennessee State, a great quarterback down there, and uh, it looks like Pat Bonner has got the job for uh, for Florida A&M, so it should be a good one. And then they go up to Delaware State to take on the Hornets. And today's game has been brought to you by Southwest Airlines. With fares so low, you have the freedom to go places and do things you never thought possible. Fly Southwest Airlines. And by McDonald's, the irresistible taste that makes you say, but somebody say McDonald's. Again, 45-7, to 7, the final score. And don't forget, Comic View is next. And at 11 o'clock Eastern, it's the return of I Spy for Lem Barney and the entire BET Sports staff. Charlie Neal saying so long from Jackson, Mississippi, where the Rattlers of Florida A&M have come away with a 38-point victory over the Tigers of Jackson State, 45-7. to 7. We'll see you October 3rd from the Dome in Indianapolis, Indiana. It'll be Bethune-Cookman and Howard University at the Circle City Classic. Good night. Under a dome of Dominican blue sky, a war is being waged. Just one week to go in the Dominican Republic Summer League, it's Spanish. But on the field, they yell in English. Lori Martinez, the Dodgers player coordinator, explains. They have to speak in English because if they go to the States, they have to speak in English. If they go to the States, that says it all. We're not talking vacation here. This isn't about a trip to Disneyland. We're talking Major League Baseball. The chance to grab hold of this most American of pastimes. Harry 